I am live, it says. Is anybody in the stream? I'm looking at comments. I have no idea how to see how many people are in here. Oh, Harrison's in the house. What's up, man? I was just going to take my GoPro and film myself opening these uh, mystery tackle boxes, but I was like, why not do a live? Then I'll have the video recorded anyway. Mark is red. Says Dim Boys Outdoors is here. Hopefully that's live and you guys are in because it's telling me that there's zero people in in the corner. Um, what's up, Harrison? Go ahead and comment if you guys are hearing me live right now and just say I can hear you. That's a bright light. Yeah, here. Um, I could try to move back. Will it look really bad if I turn off my, like, studio lights? Hold on. How off? Yeah, that's terrible. <laughs> Let's go with one light instead of two. It's going to be bright. All right, guys. <laughs> I'm just going to look like I'm glowing. All right. Thank you, guys. So, anyway, um, let me know. Do you want to see me unbox two mystery boxes, or do you want to see me go ahead and open three? Say two or three in the comments. I could do two. I could do three. I'm pretty sure I know what the answer is going to be. Recovery vest and says better. Thank you. Yeah, I got my studio lights on and I'm sitting kind of close because I want people to see this, but I'll, I'll work on that next time. This is a last minute thing. Dim Boys Outdoors says three. All right, we're going to do three mystery boxes. The first one I opened last night and there's already a fish brain post about it. This came in the mail. Oh, wow, that's super bright. <laughs> this came in the mail from a. Uh, Luke Crane's Outdoors on YouTube. Check out Luke Crane's Outdoors on YouTube. And if you got a fish brain, it's just Luke Crane, all lowercase, one word. Um, so he sent this to me. I won this uh, in the live stream. If any of you were in that stream, I think NKR was. Harrison definitely was. Um, I He kept telling me, yo, check, your, uh, check that video. I just released the winner. And I was like, yeah, I'll check it later, man, because we were in the middle of the live. And he kept saying it. I was like, all right, there's a reason why he's saying this. And I was watching the video, and my reaction was gold. I like I was like, Woo! I think my phone fell down and everything. It was hilarious. What's up, NKR? What's up, uh, everybody who's in the chat? Thank you guys for joining in. So this is the mystery tackle box I got from Luke Crane's Outdoors. I'm going to do that one before I do the two that I have not opened yet. So I know what's in here. I have no idea what's in the other two. So without further ado, I'm going to get to it. You got the basic little book that it comes with. If no one's ever, This is my first mystery tackle box ever. I was super excited yesterday. So it comes with a book called The Dibble. It's tips and tricks. Um, so you got like fun facts on the front. It teaches you how to tie a Palomar knot if you don't know how. Um, and then this is really good. I'm going to, on next Tuesday, I think I'm going to mention this a little bit. Uh, casting rods versus spinning rods. I think I'll hold it down here. You can see it better. The light's super bright, though. I'm really sorry about that. I'm going to try to get that figured out. Oh. But yeah, there's something on here about when to use casting rods, when to use spinning rods, what to use them with. And uh, it's just like you guys probably already know, but it's going to be something cool to go over. I'll probably go over it next Tuesday on uh, Multi-Species Weekly. So I think that's going to be on Sharp Fishing TV, who's in the chat right now. It's going to be on his channel. So definitely check that out. Country Boyo here. Yeehaw, baby. Yeah, that's right, NKR. <laughs> yeah, so there's just that. And then this is hilarious on the back. It says, where do anglers poop? <laughs> the first one is back at the dock. The second one's in your bait bucket. The third one's don't poop. The fourth one, poop in the trees. The fifth one is pull up to a house. Hopefully it's, <laughs> it's not just a random house. The sixth one is find a yacht. I don't know anything about that. I don't know if a rich person's going to let you on your yacht to poop. And the seventh one is poop your pants. It says the emergency of all emergencies. I'm not going to do that. One. So let's get to the actual stuff here, guys, instead of all this. All right, we're going to get to some baits. We're going to get to some baits. It came with a sticker. I think I already took the sticker out, but there's a sticker that looked like this, um, but this isn't a sticker. It's just a card. It was a smaller sticker, and it was black and white. So they come with stickers, too. And so this one came with five items. They usually come with either five or six items, and they call them baits. But one oh seven people in the chat. Awesome. What up, Judith and Dan Davis? What up, JV Outdoors? What up, Frontier Survival? I'm so – I'm so. oh, I'm getting rated, apparently. That's sweet. Let's do it. Um, so guys, we're doing a mystery tackle box right now. Anyone who joined in, I got this from Luke Crane's Outdoors. Uh, check out Luke Crane's Outdoors on YouTube for sure. And check out Luke Crane on uh, Fish Brain if you got a Fish Brain. Backwoods Barbarian Raid. That's awesome, man. I meant to check out his live earlier, but I was like driving. I was like, I, I don't want to do this while I'm driving. I think he had a live earlier. Either that or he put out a video saying he was doing a live. But I just met that dude last night. It seems really cool. 
Um, so let's get to it. This came with uh, this came with five items. The first one isn't really a bait. It's a three pack of uh, four aught. Gosh, this light. Four aught. Um, let's, let's see if I can do something about that. Laser sharp hooks. And they're uh, wide gap worms. So I knew I was going to be getting some soft plastics in there. They look super sharp. I haven't opened them yet, but I'm sure I'll end up stabbing myself with these. Um, I'm sure, really trying to figure out this light still, guys. Next next live is going to be better for sure because my light, my light is like incredibly bright right now. But beyond those, I knew I was getting some soft plastics, and I was right. We got the Bio Spawn Vile Crawl. Yeah, that light's better right there. It's a seven pack. And I don't know if you can see them. It's like a dark green with purple like flakes on it. And they call it sprayed grass. So I don't know what the grass is sprayed with. It's purple. Maybe some purple Kool-Aid or something. We got 14 people in. That's my record, actually. I've never had more than 14 in a live before. This is my third live ever on YouTube. So I'm actually, I think I can actually crack these open and show you guys one. I didn't even do this yet. It says enhanced with bio scent. They just smell like uh, soft plastic to me. But this is what that thing looks like. Go ahead and comment in the chat if you've thrown anything like this. I'm sure you have. I was, I was thinking like weightless, almost like a Texas rig. Throw it in ponds and lakes. And then go ahead. And, oh, 17. Awesome, guys. I really appreciate that. And Harrison's telling people to smash the like button. Thank you so much, Harrison. Um, that's awesome. What up, Backwoods Barbarian? I appreciate it. I heard I got raided and you had something to do with it. Uh, did you have a live earlier or are you having a live tonight? I saw some some notification about it. What up, Jefferson Einstein? What up, JB Outdoors? We're showing off a mystery tackle box. This is actually only the second item. The first one was the laser sharp hooks to go with it. Uh, four aught with a, yeah, their wide gap worm hooks. And now I'm showing the bio spawn bio crawls right now in sprayed grass. And this is what the actual bait itself looks like. Pretty cool. It's like it's got green and purple flakes in it. And uh Put it lightweight on it, fishes tech. That's exactly what I was going to – oh, put a lightweight? I usually do weightless. I will – like when you say lightweight, a weight that's um, – uh, just shut down the live. All right, man, I meant to join in. I was driving. I just got home. So when you say a weight, are you doing a peg like a, a, a swivel with a weight above, or are you doing the weight going all the way down and hitting the thing for sure? Kind of like a pack of crawl. Yeah, I'm actually like – the soft plastics that I've thrown are basically mostly Senkos. I've, I've caught plenty of bass, but I've just I've only been fishing like a year, a little over a year. So great punching bait. So, yeah, I got a pond on, actually on my sister's property that it's got like um, it. Most of the year you can't fish it very well because it's got a bunch of moss on it. And I was thinking big old weight, like one, two ounce and try to punch that through there. Just a small bullet weight. OK, yeah, small bullet weight that will hit right to it. I'm going to try that out for sure, Jeremy. All Britain. If you have any idea, I'm sorry if I pronounced that wrong. Texas rig, yeah, uh, one eighth ounce. Okay, I was just about to ask what uh, what weight. So yeah, this you guys are definitely gonna. If you check out my channel, you'll definitely see me catch some bass on here coming soon. The uh, the ice is all about to thaw off, so I'll be at that pond. I'll be at some local lakes, and I'm gonna try these in the creek because I'm sure you know they look like a crawl. There's plenty of crawls in the creek. Most of what fish in creeks are eating is actually crawls when if you cut them open most of the time. It's Jeremy All Britain, you got it, man. Right on. So that was the that was the second item. First was the hooks. We got three more items here, and then we're actually unboxing two more mystery tackle boxes after this one. We're doing three, not just two. I had a surprise for you guys. So the next one, another soft plastic. We got the Bass Dynasty, and what's tripping me out about these ones, guys? They call them. It's a seven-inch worm. They call them Dyna Curl Two X. So it's got a curl. I'll, I'll just pop it open. Why not? It's got a curly tail on both sides so it's like i think wacky rig would be the way to go but i'm sure you could fish this texas rig i just think the action might be better because it's got a tail on both sides i'm about to rip one of the tails off on accident here the color also is tripping me out it's called a uh, scrap metal it's a weird it's in the in the live stream here on my camera it looks darker than it is it's actually more of a like a cloudy like a silvery gray color and here's what the see that that's why i think wacky because look at that action i'm sure you could do texas rig really. wacky for sure yeah 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 yeah. you don't know the first thing about bass fishing well back was barbarian i don't know a whole lot about it i caught like 400 bass last year which was just the product of grinding an incredible amount but this year i'm gonna try to catch bass on more things and hopefully we all learn some more stuff what up henry harrington what up outdoor fin addicts i think it's awesome we got 17 people in here i didn't even know i was gonna do a live i got home and i was just gonna film myself unboxing these on the gopro and i decided to do it live instead so anyone who joined in, I'm just going to show them real fast. I'm not going to go over them again. But we just did the, the bio spawn bio crawl and sprayed grass. 
I'm going to try that out here soon. And then what we just opened was the uh, Dyna Curl. This is by Bass Dynasty. I'll show you the package again. It's a seven inch worm Dyna Curl. Where are you at? I'm in Missouri. I went scouting today and couldn't find any spots that wasn't iced over. Uh, I found one hole where a guy was ice fishing. He said the ice was rough. So I'm going to try it tomorrow. I'm doing a live fishing tomorrow, 2.30 Central, 3.30 Eastern, I think. It's going to be around there. And it's going to be on the channel Forward Fishing. So check out Forward Fishing. I'm going to be doing live tomorrow. And it's a tournament. It's me versus Sharp Fishing TV versus um, Forward Fishing, the guy who's hosting it. And I'm probably going to get smacked because I might, I might not even find much open water at all. But I might do some ice fishing. But yeah, this thing, I just wanted to show you the, the double tails on there. I'll definitely make a video of uh, whether I catch something or not just to show you the action and stuff. But yeah, I was thinking definitely Wacky Rig for that one. I got I got you now. I'll check it out. Yeah, go to guys, go, go to forward fishing tomorrow around 2.30 uh, Central Time or whatever your time zone is equivalent of that. Um, it's going to be sweet. We're going to be doing a live tournament, me and two other guys. And they will definitely get on some fish. I don't know if I will because it's all ice here, but I'm going to do my best. I've never done ice fishing, but I'm going to try to find someone else's hole because I don't have an auger or nothing. But, yeah, I'm showing these one more time for anyone who didn't see them. Just a three-pack of four-aught wide gap worm hooks. We've, we've opened three items now. There's two items left in here. I'm going to save the best for last. 19 people. That is awesome. Uh, didn't have all that back when. Yeah, let me look at the chat. Sorry, guys. I keep uh, – didn't have all that. Dixie May says, didn't have all that back when. Just a worm and hook floating cane pole. Dixie May, I want to make a, a video, either a cane pole or like fishing with a stick or something. I'm going to do that come soon once it gets a little bit warmer out. Hold on, let me get a drink, guys. I'm getting a little bit of dry mouth. But yeah, I want to do some challenges like that for sure. And I do I do a lot of, yeah, and flow. I like, to, I like bottom fishing a lot too as opposed to just float fishing. Wacky rig that one. I'm with you, recovery best, and that looks definitely like a wacky rig. And sorry when I scroll, I put my finger on the screen. Um, this was really a way for me to test out going live on my phone because tomorrow I'm going to be on my phone when we're doing the live uh, fishing tournament. Henry Harrington went fishing yesterday, caught six catfish. I saw some of those little bullheads. Those were cool, man. Today you caught one. I saw your green sunfish today too, man. I, I would love, love, love. Cane pole video would be cool. All right, I'll think about that. Either that or just fishing with a stick or something. Either way. Andy Griffith show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that old school stuff. I, I could watch that stuff forever. Just like uh, at the very beginning, the, the little uh, fishing poles are walking with. So let's get to the other two items. How you live on your phone. I'm on StreamYard, man. Go to StreamYard, log in and test it. Oh, awesome sweatshirt. I didn't even show you guys. I didn't order enough yet for these to be for sale. But if anyone's interested, um, just go ahead and comment on one of my videos. I'll give you my email, and I could probably make that happen. I got a bunch of colors of these. I'm not going to get into showing my different colors of sweatshirts because that's not what this is all about. StreamYard has mobile now. Yeah, I think you get if you don't if you're not a paid member, you can get like 20 hours a month of mobile. So go on StreamYard. You can link your YouTube account. Um, the only way to stream directly to YouTube from YouTube is to have over a thousand subs. But I have 300 subscribers, and I can do. I can do it on my phone through StreamYard. So, and the quality to me, I don't know how it looks to you guys, but it looks a lot better to me on the screen that I'm seeing than it does when I do the live streams every Tuesday um, on my computer. So I may try this that way. I'm not really sure. So we'll get to this item. Check this out, guys. Second to last item from the first one. It is the Hard Hat Jigs. It's by Catch Company. It's the Lumberjack Flippin' Jig. And this color, I don't know if you can see it. So it's orange with with black if i take it out of the package it won't be as much of a glare it's orange with black stripes and it's got a lot of purple also and then purple flex they're calling it pb and j which i you know you can see why it's got that brownish orangish and then that purple now um I, i'm thinking this is something you can throw with or without a trailer right guys i'm not a big jig guy i plan to throw a lot more jigs coming this spring um, let me know in the comments what trailer you would throw with this or if you would try it out without a trailer for sure, everybody. So it's got this little weedless hairs. They're like hard. They're like, I feel like horse hair. If you know what a horse hair brush feels like, but a little more plastic and that should do, you know, some work in my pond for the weeds and stuff. You're at 316 now, buddy. That's awesome. I was at 321 this morning. I had, I don't know what happened. I lost, I went down to 309. I didn't even, I only got one short today. Crack and crawl. All right, Henry Harrington, crack and crawl trailer with this. I'm going to write that down because I'm so serious about learning. Give me like literally five seconds. 
I'm so serious about learning new stuff, like it's not even funny. So crack and crawl, and let me know what color, and if anyone else knows any trailers that you would want to throw, I'll put that up one more time so you guys can see. It's called PB and J. One of oh, one of those crawls that I got with it, perfect. So I could use one of these bio crawls with this. And would you you just rig it through the head like that, and just either slow retrieve it and twitch, or pop it along bottom? Am I sounding something right? And then crack and crawl, I could try that as well. This looks like a decent combo. They both got some purple in them. I could try that for sure. Normally I use net bait crawl, but I make my own jigs. Yeah, anybody, I don't know. Is Crack and Crawl a color or is that a brand? Because I'm not super, like, if there's a certain color of that, let me know. I'll Crack and Crawl for the PBJ jig. I'm hoping, like, I love learning from you guys in the comments. I really appreciate that. It's so awesome. Yeah, just pinch some off of it, off of, off of this because it's so long. You mean pinch a little bit of these tails off, uh, Jeremy Albritton? Because if I pinch a little bit off of those tails, you can actually use those pieces of tails that you pinched off for, for panfish. You just jig them in front of rocks and stuff, and you'll smash green sunfish. It's pretty cool. Or put them under a float. So I'm guessing you're saying pinch them off the tail because that's the first thing I thought was that, like, that, that dangle down there looks a little long. Probably get the bass to bite the, uh, the tail on there and not get them hooked, like, half the time. So, yeah, I don't know if you guys are commenting right now, but I think there's a little delay. So the just one more time, it was the, the PBJ um, by Lumber by, – by Catch Company. It's Lumberjack flipping Jig. Yeah, pinch them off the tail for sure. Oh, the body? So leave all that tail, but if I pinch them off the head and then hook it there, yeah, for sure. Yeah, 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 uh, Mark J. Larson Outdoors. I'm going to get some bass to bite on this on my channel for sure. I'm either going to hook it up with this or I'm going to do a crack and crawl is what people are saying. And so I'm going to try one where I pinch a tiny bit off the head, so it's a little shorter, but it has the same tail action. And I might try one where I pinch a little off the tail. I might even fish it a little bit straight before pinching any off. Tear off about a half inch of the body. Yeah, that's perfect. That's actually, I might just do that. So it's, it's more rigged like here if there's a half inch off the body. So you don't have as much dangle on there. For sure. All right, thank you guys for that. I'm, I'm going to write that down too real quick. Half inch off the body. I'm not going to rip it off yet just in case I want to um, fish those with a Texas rig or weight, a weightless rig or something. Half, uh, rip half off trailer or crawl body. All right, guys, there is one more item in this first mystery tackle box, and we got two more mystery tackle boxes after this. This item I'm most excited about. Has anybody thrown the boom? It's a Guggen Squad blooper. I don't know why it's called blooper. It looks like a topwater pop and bait to me. <laughs> I know that's what it is. But that color is called nightclub. I don't know about that green and black. It looks beautiful to me. But tell me how the – what up, Backwoods Barbarian? You missed the uh, – I think you missed unboxing this jig. It's a PB&J jig. It's got a little bit of weightless – or I mean weightless, weedless uh, hairs on there. And then, um, yeah, we talked about what we could pair it with, some a crawl like this or something like that. And then this is the package one more time for anyone who missed that. It's the, it's by Catch Company, Hard Hat Baits, Lumberjack Flipping Jig. So yeah, back to the popper. Yeah, it's definitely a popper. Um, this is Guggen Squad. It's the, it's called the blooper. And whoever said makes a bloop sound, LOL. It literally says on somewhere on here. All right, I'm gonna read this to you. The cupped mouth. Feathered rear treble, glaring eye, and the eye is cool. I don't know if you guys can even see the eye. Probably not. It's got the Guggen like logo in the eye, and it like it's a hologram. It's freaking crazy. I can't show you guys very well on this thing. Oh wow, that's blurry or uh, uh, glaring. There we go. It says, uh, "On the ribbed rumble strips on the underbelly combine to form a vicious topwater bait with a uniquely enticing blooping sound." I have to hear that. I'm going to get that on video with the blooping sound, guys. That's crazy. Cast the blooper tight to cover. I think it's going to make me laugh. Cast the blooper tight to cover for a slower, more subtle topwater presentation and watch. Uh, prepare for a blow up. So, yeah, it's two and three quarter inches and it's three eighth ounce. That looks epic. That looks like a popper. It's awesome, though. Nice. Uh, yeah, I think it looks awesome. I don't know if it's just like it looks cool to people or if it's going to look cool to bass, but that's like a literally neon green hairs on there for a tail and yeah it looks solid it's got green on the front too and then it's solid black with a really sparkly eye it does make a bloop sound recovery bass and have you thrown it 
What about Metro Outdoors? This is the last item from the first mystery tackle box. So we got two more mystery tackle boxes we're going to open right here. So just I'm going to wrap it up, guys, uh, with the first one. Let me know. Let me know if like what your favorite way to throw, uh, I don't know, a popper is. Let me know like if you caught a giant fish on a popper. Let me know if you prefer them in ponds or lakes. Um, I don't know. They will eat it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't, my, my, what I've caught my topwater bass on, I think all of them have been on frogs. So I, I'm going to throw this and I'm going to throw the whopper poppers. Looks like a great dark one. That's what I'm saying. Like my pond is nor like my pond might be too light for it. I need to find some place that's dark because it's, it's got that black color on there. You definitely need to throw that in some darker water or even like a cloudy day. Maybe hopefully the other boxes aren't the same. It's happened to other people before. Yeah. Uh, we'll see. One of them's a pan. The next one I'm gonna do is panfish and trout. And then the third one's another bass box. So I know the second one won't be the same and I'm, I'm uh, pretty confident that the last one won't be the same, but if it is, whatever. Sharp said you only behind one behind me on your channel. Kudos to you, man. Yeah, thanks, thanks, Harrison. Uh, we'll see who wins that tournament tomorrow. I'm not too, I'm not too hopeful on my side, but we'll see how it goes. Oh yeah, that's a, I, always fish black top water. Oh really? Yeah, I, I either throw a yellow or white, or I throw one with a black bottom. As far as like the frogs, because the bottom's all that really matters. The fish aren't seeing nothing else. I seem to do better with top. Soft plastics on top wire, like a Z-Man minnow on a light wire hook. I've actually caught a bass on a top water Senko, like a Strike King six inch, five inch, something like. I think it's five inch shimmy stick. It was in Smoky Shad, and I was popping it on top of the lily pads and the moss, and a bass came up and smashed it. So Z-Man minnow on light wire hook. I'm gonna look that up. Like what size of hook when you say light wire hook? I just kicked my tripod. Sorry. So yeah, Harrison, this is my new tripod. So. It seems like I can stream from my phone, and it seems like my tripod works good. So hopefully our, our live thing will be good tomorrow, whether I catch some fish or not. Or not. All right, we're going to get to the second box here. Let me do – let me write this down. Z-Man Minnow on a light wire hook for top water. All right. Top water. Cool. So that was the first mystery tackle box. Um, still 15 people in here. That's pretty sweet. I didn't even know I was going to do a live today. It was just a spur of the moment thing. So this was the first one, two to four. Okay. Four is four small. That's crazy. I'll definitely do that. So yeah, this was given to me by Luke Cranes Outdoors on YouTube. If anybody wants to check him out, he, he does giveaways and stuff like that. And I, he, I literally won this completely free. What up, Josh? He's got two frowny faces. I don't know why. Not just you. My go-to top water is a – oh, I got to write all this down. Unidentified user. What is up, my man? So yeah, I got this from Luke Crane's Outdoors on YouTube, and look up Luke Crane on Fish Brain as well. I won this completely free from him. Um, unidentified user says, and thank you for the for the tips, Hedden Teeny Torpedo. The Teeny Torpedo. Um, great hook ratio and anything will eat it okay i'm eating teeny torpedo and that is the top water old school top water zara spooks and devil horse hey uh, did someone leave i said take care of jeremy hate to run all right jeremy see you later if you do have to leave if you can join us back up that'd be awesome but thanks for joining in and i appreciate all the advice from everybody zara spook and devil horse what are those um, I don't have my laptop up. I, normally when I do lives, I love to be knowledgeable. I love to have my laptop with me and I always I'm looking up stuff, but today it's, it's sitting over there and I don't feel like setting it up right now. I think it's about to die. anyway. So Zara spook. What, what exactly type of top water is a Zara spook later, Jeremy, thank you for joining in is a Zara spook in a devil horse. I get that right. Is a devil horse. I, I caught my 14 pounder on my wall. Oh my God. Goodness. Yeah, I know top water. I guess, yeah, I'll just look them up. That's fine. I don't know if they're frogs or like some specific type of top water. I'll definitely look those up though. Thank you so much, Daddy Duck365. I really appreciate any advice, guys. That's so awesome. And yeah, if you're still in here, Jeremy All Britain, thank you so much. See you later. So we're gonna recap in as fast as I possibly can what items were in that first one. We got some hooks. It was laser sharp. I'm holding them upside down. Three of them, four out hooks, wide gap worms for soft plastics. I got the vile crawl biospawn little crawls in sprayed grass i got the bass dynasty seven inch dyna curl in uh 
scrap metal. They're seven inches and they got a double curl tail on them, which I've never thrown a worm with two curly tails. Later, Jeremy. And then also the last two things, we got the lumberjack flipping jig again by Catch Company. It's in peanut butter and jelly, and I'm going to either pair it with that crawl, or some other type of crawl, or experiment with some other stuff. And finally, my the one that I'm most excited about is the Guggen Squad. I'm so bad at showing things. But the Guggen Squad blooper right there, topwater popper. It's got lime green and black on it. It's called Nightclub is the color scheme. Super excited to throw that one. Always go with baby bass. Just walk the dog with it and hang on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I either do a, a – I either do a slow retrieve, like, I know a lot of people don't do this, but I do like just a slow retrieve or even a quicker constant retrieve when I'm doing top waters or I walk it. It depends on what they're going for. Some mornings I feel like they're not really going for it when I'm walking it and I'll just slow retrieve it, pause. And it's like on those pauses, they just come and smash it. The reason I do that is because with bass, I mean with frogs, they're not always just spazzing out, hopping on top of the water. They, a lot of times, you know, they're out there hopping, but how many times do you see a frog and it's just, you know, sitting there with its head just barely up above the water? looks around a little bit, moves around and then pauses a little bit. That's what I think a lot of fish are also looking for. So I think there's multiple ways to do it, but definitely walk the dog with it and hang on. Yeah. I don't know if I'm going to get a 14 pounder. That must've been like a Florida strain or something, daddy duck. Where are you living at? Because in Missouri, our record bass isn't even 14 pounds. It's 13. We don't have Florida strain. We got the, the other type, the bass that don't get quite as big. And I'm going to write baby bass. Thanks. Uh, unidentified user. Are you the unified, unidentified user from, uh, from, um, fish brain or am I getting you confused with somebody else? Cause there's someone on there and, they, and I know that's just, that could be anyone on un, unidentified user, but let me know if you're that person. Cause I do, I do know someone named that on fish brain, baby bass. And anyone who is joining me from fish brain or Instagram, thank you guys so much. Cause that's, that's really awesome. I appreciate that. I just got that Instagram. I got to run some fish King. See you later. Yeah. Check out the uh, replay. If you do want to see what the other two boxes were for sure. I'll get them South Carolina. Okay. Okay. I'll have to look up what the record bass is there. That's awesome. Yeah, unidentified user. What's up, man? Glad to have you in. It's super awesome. I'm going to get to the next uh, mystery tackle box here. I just opened the first one. Fishing man, what is up, dude? We just opened one tackle box. I really don't want to go over it for a third time for everybody, but it had some nice baits in it, and I made a post on Fish Brain about it yesterday. I'm going to do two more tackle boxes here, and you can always rewind if you want to watch uh, what was in the first one. But my loyal people who have been here, I'm not going to show them you know, the same baits over and over again. Anyone who's just joining in also, I do want to say thanks for joining in. And I shamelessly showing off my new hoodie that I made. It was super awesome. It says fishing's good. And I will try to show you the back, but I'm probably going to aim this like way off camera. But that's what the back looks like. Pretty sweet. I designed uh, the logos on Canva, I think. And then the hoodie I ordered from Custom Ink. No worries. Yeah, uh, state record, 16 pound, two ounces. Thanks, that's freaking awesome. Sunfish Assassin is in the house. What is up, my man? Everybody go check out Sunfish Assassin. Everyone go check out Fishing Man. And I don't know if Daddy Duck 365 is a supporter or if he has a channel or what, but go ahead and click him anyway just to see if he has a channel because he's been helping me all night. If he knows Sunfish Assassin, then he's, he's a cool dude because he said, what's up, brother, to Sunfish Assassin. Got to go to bed. Thank you so much for joining in. Uh, you can always check back and rewind this thing if you do want to see the other two tackle boxes. Picked up my channel. Thank you, Mark Lark. Everyone check out Mark Larson Outdoors. I'm going to go check you out after this thing's over for sure. Glad to meet you, bud. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, if anyone likes bass or catfish or any fish that I haven't really caught on my channel yet, I just started my channel right before it got cold. So I got like video. I got like a Picture videos of those like bass and carp and like awesome stuff that I caught last year, but I didn't have the GoPro. So this year is going to be so awesome. As soon as it thaws, it's going to start getting crazy. Daddy Duck is great. Yeah. Does he have a channel? Has a great channel. Yeah. All right, man. So this is one thing I need to do too, because I really love you guys who are supporting me. I'm going to write down a few of your guys. I can't guarantee you that I'm going to, you know, check out everybody, but I'll really try. So we got Daddy Duck 365 and we got, it was Mark. Let's see. I'm already subbed to Backwoods Barbarian and Fishing Man. I shouldn't say the S word. Mark J. Larson. I'm already anchored to him. I'm hook set to him, whatever you want to say. Mark J. Larson. Because the S-U-B word, for some reason, YouTube doesn't like. And I don't know to the extent that it goes, but they treat it like a bad word. An amazing trapper. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll have to check that out. I'm, I want to get into – I am I'm mainly made this channel for fishing, but I, I'll do some probably hunting and stuff this this year as well. I don't really know how that's going to go, but we'll, we'll check for sure. We are going to get into 
The next tackle box, unidentified user said last mystery tackle box had some nice J hooks for a live rigging chub. I'll try that for sure. I can catch some nice chub around here and it's kind of far from anywhere that has good bass where the chub are in this little creek. But I think there's a creek closer that I could probably get some chubs out of. And those are bass candy and uh, catfish love chubs too. Cast and cast. Crazy. If you end up winning the giveaway I got going on. Cast and cast. Who are you talking about? Just everybody or me or everyone? Check out Cast and Cast's giveaway. He's got a giveaway going on right now on the YouTube channel or what? What uh, social media is it on? Daddy Ducks at three six five says support each other. I'm gonna go ahead and get into this next tackle box. I just opened the first one from Luke Crane's Outdoors. It was a gift. These other two I bought with my subscription, and I want to find out. Does it tell you, does anyone know, does it tell you on the tackle box if it's bass, if it's panfish or what it is? Because I might just have to open up a random one, not knowing which is bass and which is panfish. Yeah, it doesn't say. It doesn't say. What is up, Becca, Mud, Mud Tramp? Everyone check out Mud Tramp. She's like super awesome. I checked out a couple of her videos and she's also like always on these live streams with people. So and always, always sharing uh, links and stuff like that. What up, Fish Slayer Freshwater? Please join us on Tuesday, and we will talk about what you said you wanted to talk about, the um, the uh, keeping fish versus releasing fish. We're going to talk about that next Tuesday on Sharp Fishing TV's channel. Everyone tune in next Tuesday to Sharp Fishing TV. We do it every Tuesday, either his channel, my channel, or Forward Fishing, and it's called Multi-Species Weekly. We're going to start doing that every week. What up, Georgia Fisherman? And Henry Harrington, yeah, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go try ice fishing tomorrow. I'm gonna do it live. So everyone, check out Forward Fishing tomorrow at 2:30 Central Time. I'm gonna be ice fishing. I've never done that before. We'll see how that goes. And then the, there's gonna be two other guys, and we're gonna be competing and see who can catch more fish. What is up, Caribou County, Caribou Country Outdoors? I appreciate that. He says, smash that thumbs, leave a comment, and interact with the channel. We're gonna pop this box open for you guys. Without any further ado, this is Mystery Tackle Box number two. We've been going for 32 minutes. And if you guys want to rewind and look at that last tackle box or do that at the end, that's cool too. Georgia Fisherman is awesome. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've only been ever through Georgia. I don't think I've ever stopped in Georgia because my grandparents live in Florida. I'm pretty sure I've been through Georgia, but I don't think I've stopped there. And I know they have massive sunfish, so I'd absolutely love to get out there. I was just talking to Fishing Man today about how I need to get to Georgia. The ice, I missed out on the ice here because I went to Florida. Yeah, I think the ice is... If there's safe ice tomorrow, I'll fish on it, but I'm not going to risk it. Everyone who's watching, if you haven't ice fished or even if you do ice fish, please, please, please be careful if you go out there. If you don't know how thick the ice is, try to take a sample hole close to the bank. And if it's less than two inches, get to four inches, really three or four, you need to get off there. Tackle box, we're opening it right now. I don't know. One of these two tackle boxes is going to be panfish and trout. One is going to be bass. I was going to open the panfish and trout first, but I don't know which is which. So what up, uh, everybody who's in here? I don't know if there's anybody new or if I missed anyone. But thanks, every, oh, thanks all 14 people who are in here. Oh, it's the bass one. All right, so I'm going to need a vote real quick. I'm going to go off the first six people who comment. Let's do five so that it can't be a tie. Everyone comment bass or panfish. Which one do you want me to open first? One's panfish and trout and one's bass. These mystery tackle boxes. We're taking a vote right now. You guys want to see some bass baits or you want to see some panfish baits? I'm going to show them both, but which one do you guys want to see right now? I'm sure someone's commented. I'm just waiting for the chat to come through. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. All right. It goes panfish, panfish, bass, panfish, panfish. This is why I love you guys. See, I love bass, but... You know how to warm the heart of the Sunfish King by everybody voting panfish. I love them both. I love them all. We're going to open the panfish one because before today, I didn't even know there were panfish mystery tackle boxes. I thought it was a bass thing. That's probably why I haven't looked into it until now. All right. We got 16 people in here. Looks like no one wants bass. Hey, Fishing ATX, as soon as I'm done with the panfish one, I'm going to pop open the bass one. All right. Here it is, everybody. Oh, no, that's the bass one. Here's the panfish one, everybody. Gonna head, go ahead and get that one right open. I don't know if it's going to be jigs, special hooks to use for live bait. I don't know if it's going to be tiny cranks, rooster tails. I want to see some trout baits. Haha. -ha. 
Yeah, I don't know. Trout baits and panfish baits are pretty much the same thing most of the time. Like I use little spinners. I use little jigs for both, tiny soft plastics for both, um, cranks for both. The only thing I use for trout that I don't use for panfish would be like big globs of power bait because I've actually never had a panfish hit a big glob of power bait. They'll go for the tiny little crappie nibbles. But if I put one of those big old globs on there, I either get a catfish or I get a trout every time. How are you gaining subs so fast? Fishing ATX, how am I gaining subs so fast? Number one, I'm trying to upload every day. I've actually noticed some people say don't upload every day because it takes away from your other videos. My best day I had, I uploaded like four videos in one day. And so YouTube has been telling me lately, if you look at your analytics, you can see which videos are doing good. Which I'm not going to get into all the analytics and stuff, but you can do some research on that. But basically, try to upload often. What I'm going to work on going forward, because I have a couple old videos that I probably shouldn't have uploaded because they're just kind of eh, and I'm, I'm getting serious about YouTube now, so I want to make good content. So get good at – good night, all tubby guy outdoors. Later, guys. Later, uh, is JV Outdoors leaving too? Everyone who's heading out. What up, Mike Turner, 712 catfishing? How's it going, guys? Bass Pro Crickets, you float them on the surface. And green sunfish cream. All right, we're about to open a – uh, mystery tackle box here. I was just talking about something, but I got distracted by everyone commenting. So <laughs> I think I'm just going to open this thing up because I kind of forgot what I was talking about. You can comment if you want to continue what I was saying, but I totally forgot what I was saying when Mike Turner joined in. No offense, Mike. Thanks for joining in. I just got sidetracked because I, I don't check the uh, chat. Then I finally check it and I scroll back up because I missed like 10 chats. So anyone who's heading out, it looks like Tubby Outdoors is heading out. Backwoods is heading out. Later, guys. I'm about to open this panfish thing. All right. Yeah, we were talking about uh, panfish versus trout. So, yeah, this is panfish and trout baits. We just did a, a bass box. So, all right. Later, everyone who's leaving, and welcome to anyone who just joined in. Going to go ahead and open this mystery tackle box right here. It's got five or six baits in it, and they are for panfish or trout. So, first off. All right, this tells me what's in there, so I don't have to sound like I don't know what I'm talking about. So what do we got? Lucky John Pro Series Ultra Worm, and this is listed at a two at a two dollar and ninety nine cent value. It is Lucky John Ultra Worm, one point four inch. There's twelve of them. They're chartreuse. It says explosive injection of scent and taste. These look like some solid panfish jigs, and you could definitely get trout on these too. If I go to Roaring River or something like that, I'll get some trout on these, or even the lake. It says, there's a picture of a shrimp, and it says s &T formula. So apparently they're shrimp scented or something. I'm going to pop one open, and pop them open and pull one out. They're definitely different than the panfish jig. I normally throw, I won't get them out right now, but you guys have seen the Bobby Garland ones with the, you know, just the chat. I don't know, sexy shad or whatever. The shad style is just a normal little tiny minnow looking thing. Only tubby guys leaving. Okay. I thought Backwoods was leaving. Thanks, everyone, who's chilling with me. I don't know if you guys can see that very well, but it's like – I'll try to hold it by the tail. It's like ribbed for the fish's pleasure, guys. Like, look at that. It's got all those grooves and curves in it. I think it'd be good – I might bring these. I'm going to bring this tomorrow for the ice fishing, guys, because this looks like a little uh, like a, a mealworm or a superworm or something that people take when they go ice fishing. So I'm doing a live fishing tomorrow on Forward Fishing's. If anyone hasn't heard me say that seven times, Forward Fishing's YouTube channel, 2.30 Central Time. I'm going to bring some of these with me. I'm going to do some ice fishing. So those are going with me tomorrow for sure. That was the... Lucky John Pro Series Ultra Worm in Chartreuse, and it's a 12-pack. It's listed at a $2.99 value. Caribou Country, outdoors coming down. Ha ha. We got unidentified user. In the Chicago suburbs, we only have stock trout lakes that average 40 fishermen per acre. I only have stock trout lakes and a couple stock trout streams because I'm in Missouri. Someone's asked me if I want to work tomorrow. I can't do it. My boss just texted me and said, do you want to work tomorrow? I totally can't. Um... Almost time for a midnight snack first, Backwood Barbarian. It's hilarious. Hey, what up, Jeremy Albritton? Welcome back. Um, I don't know what you missed, if you missed any from the first tackle box, but we are on to the second tackle box, and all we have opened, this is the panfish and trout. The third one is another bass box I'm going to open next. But this one was the Lucky John Pro Series Ultra Worms in Chartreuse. 
And uh, I'll show you one, one, one more time real quick before we get to the next bait. It's chartreuse with a red flake, and it's got these, these little ridges on it. Very interesting. I'm going to take them ice fishing tomorrow in that video I was telling you about. I'm going to do a live video tomorrow, part of a fishing tournament on Forward Fishing's channel. And I'm going to use some of these for ice fishing. All right. Did I miss anything? I'm eating that potato. <laughs> the chat is popping right now. Anyone else ready for the weekend? I know I, I, know I am. If I can get some, some uh, fish through the ice tomorrow, it'll build that confidence for the weekend. I've got, you know, a lot of stuff, chores I need to do over the weekend. But if I can either find open water somewhere or find a hole in the ice that's, you know, I think by the weekend I'm not going to be walking out there because it's, it's melting quick. It's been in the 40s and 50s this week. But if I, I, I just need to find a place to fish by this weekend, I'll be even more excited. Good luck out there. Thank you, fishing man. Uh, yeah, if anyone can join in 2.30 Central time tomorrow on Forward Fishing's channel, there's going to be a fishing tournament. I don't know if I'm going to win or if I'm going to lose, but we'll see how it goes. They're going to be catching some creek fish, maybe some catfish bass, something like that. So the next bait here, we got another one of the, the dibble tips and tricks. Just a bunch of just a bunch of random stuff in there. Here's four trout lures you can rely on year-round. I'll read those real quick for you, the next one. Jigs, spinners, spoons, and jerk baits. Those are four trout lures that you can rely on year round. So I out of all those, I'm gonna say jigs and spinners are my favorite, but that's because I haven't thrown a lot of jerk baits and I should probably throw some soon because they do really well when it's cold. I know cranks do good for, for the trout too, smaller cranks. Woo hoo hoo. Okay, okay, what do we got here? Next bet next bait, everybody. Find a spillway. Yeah, we don't. I, there's nothing open. There's literally nothing open around here. I have a spillway in my lake. It's completely iced over. Um, later, JB Outdoors. There is the Kansas River. I might go check out because it's got a little bit of a dam thing under this bridge where I normally fish. And I, if it's open, I could do some catfish in there probably. But I'm afraid that it's going to be pretty much. I, everything is ice around you. I don't know how to stress that. I know, like, find a spillway. I've been trying to find warm water, discharge, something. I literally went out scouting after school today, and I didn't find any. I found one hole in the ice, and there was an ice fisherman there. And he said, oh, this ice sucks. I wouldn't walk on it. He said, especially in the afternoon. And guess what I'm trying to do tomorrow? Go out there in the afternoon and walk on it. I will be careful, though. You guys be careful if you're ice fishing. So later, uh, JV, thank you for joining in. Bridges are always good. I checked out a, a couple of bridges today. They were, they were closer to not being completely frozen than the rest, but they were completely frozen. I could. One of the bridge spots was maybe thin enough that I could throw some giant rocks down there and break a spot and then maybe drop a bait down. So, I mean, if it gets that deep to where I need to do that, I'm going to do that. You got to do what you got to do when it's winter time. All right. Thanks for those tips. The second bait in the, in the, in the package here. Oh, wow. What is that called? The Janko fishing Kevin Rogers Warbird hand tied jigs three pack. These are some trout baits if i've ever seen some trout baits guys look at those so what i would do is i would if i'm fishing the river i mean i try to go clear where you can see them and i'm going to throw it out let it sink a little but not enough to get down in the rocks or even start retrieving it start burning it in as soon as they hit the uh as soon as they hit the surface and i'm just gonna i'm just gonna Constant retrieve them, maybe kind of slow, and then jig every once in a while, maybe speed up, maybe pause. But in the river, in the creek, I'm not going to do too many pauses because you're going to end up in the rocks quick. The hook's a tiny bit bigger than a – it's more of a panfish size hook than a trout hook. I prefer a little smaller for trout, but that'll, that'll work for sure, definitely for bigger trout. But, yeah, it's white with a yellow tail, and it's got a green eye on it, sparkly green eye on it. Um, anything under four inches of ice is sketchy. Yeah, I don't, it, it's definitely not four inches of ice. It's probably two. I'm going to, I'm going to be careful. There's a guy fully standing on it with all his gear today. And he said it was iffy and I'm going to try that. There's one, at least one other spot. I'm going to go try that. I might not have to stand on. I got some ideas, but it's just, it's like all ice. I will try though. I just don't have a lot of time to scout beforehand. Cause I got to do some college stuff in the morning, but this is a freaking, this will work for panfish, but this is what I like to use for trout in a lake. Oh, wow. It's got like these hard bristle hairs on it. I expected these to be like soft hairs. They feel like a toothbrush or something. Like harder than that even. Like a wire brush almost. But yeah, in a lake or even a pond, I don't really fish for trout in ponds because we don't have them. But in, in a lake, I'm going to throw it out there and I'm fan casting. I'm going to start in one spot, cast, 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 cover all the water before moving down the bank. Just stay closer to the shore. Caribou County, I'm not going deeper than five feet. <laughs> Yeah, this would be a good crappie jig too. So, I mean, I 
I see no reason why not to bring this with me tomorrow for my ice fishing as well. This actually looks kind of like an ice jig. I don't have any ice jigs, but this actually is going to work pretty well. So I'm going to try the soft plastics and I'll try this as well. I'm probably just going to be doing jigging. I don't have the way to do multiple holes and drop power bait or live bait or anything. I'm probably going to have one hole bring. I, I Yeah, I got the rods with me right here. Closest thing I got to an ice rod. I'm just going to bring this little guy. It's three feet long. I'll bring two of them just in case. And uh, it's already got a jig head on there. I could put a soft plastic, but that's a little big. It's like a crappie jig. But yeah, uh, there's crappie in the lake. I'm going to be probably trying tomorrow and panfish. So used to live in Springfield, Springfield, Missouri. I might be going to school uh, for graduate school. And I don't know if you mean Springfield, Missouri, but that, but there's a Springfield in every freaking state, but I might be going to grad school there, Missouri state next semester. So yeah, that'd be a good crappie panfish, whatever it was. One more time. It was called the Jenko fishing, Kevin Robert Rogers, Warbird hand tied jig. There's three of them and they're at a $6.25 value. So anything that says hand tied on it's going to be a little more expensive. That's what that package looks like. That's what the back looks like. And I'm going to try these tomorrow fishing live stream forward fishing's channel. So that was two items. We got a couple more here. It looks like this one has five total items in it. Yeah, yeah, five total items, which is cool. Oh, a different sticker. I didn't know they came with different stickers. Look at that. Tank crossing. I might put that on my fish tank. <laughs> I don't know. That's pretty cool. Got a little bass on it. Oh. Came with <laughs> some more tips and tricks about where to fish and stuff like that. These things are loaded with goodies. So we got three more items to open here, guys. Number one. Oh, these are good for pan fish and crappie. They are... $1.99 value, Eagle Claw Pro V Bend Aberdeen Hook. And that's what it says there, but when you look at it, it says the big, nasty AB. I don't know what, but they're size six, which is like my favorite freaking size panfish hook. Walmart should, yeah, my Walmart doesn't have any ice rods fishing, man. Yeah, Missouri, Springfield, Missouri, yeah. My Walmart does not have any ice fishing rods. That's what they have for ice fishing rods at Walmart. Okay, guys, I got to go. Some Fish King, I added you to my list. Daddy Duck, I'm checking you out for sure after this. Thank you so much for, one, joining in, and for, two, giving me all the tips. So have a great night. Fist bump the screen. ba ba boom Yeah, later, Duck. Fishing Man said it. Later, Duck. But, yeah, this is a 10-pack, and these things will be – I'll freaking have used these and had them all swallowed by fish and had to fish them out of their guts by a month from now for sure. I use size six hooks like crazy. I use them with little chunks of worm. Um, corn for trout, all different types of stuff. But yeah, these are these are really cool. That's a dollar ninety nine value, so a little cheap, cheaper item. But yeah, definitely some hooks there. I don't think I'm gonna be doing any live bait for the ice fishing tomorrow, but I'll definitely use those soon. Two more items in the panfish and trout box here. What up to the thirteen people who are in the chat? I appreciate each and every one of you. So, oh wow, I'm gonna save the best for last. We got something that I am. I'm very excited about, but I guarantee I'm going to get it snagged on the bottom like the first day because that's what happens with these things. But before I show you that, we have the Jenko Fishing Kevin Rogers Afterburner right here. Size 10 Aberdeen's for getting green sunfish for bait. Unidentified user, you probably get a swallow every time. Size 10 is tiny. Like That works for green sunfish, but that is Tiny, my dude. I use size six for green sunfish. And I'll go to eight. I'll go to eight if I want to, but eight's more like a bluegill size. I wish we had trout here. I love trout fishing, man. I got more trout videos coming up soon, guys. I got some I haven't even edited yet, and then I got some more I'm going to make soon, too. And then I'm the lake I'm going to tomorrow for ice fishing is going to have some trout. But, yeah, size 10s work. They're good. I use size 10 or 12 more for, like, for like common shiners, chubs, stuff like that. But, yeah, these are called the afterburner. See what that looks like. Jenko fishing afterburner. They're these big old, big old white uh, soft plastics for jigging. And these almost look like something. I might be drunk, but these almost look like something you could use for. Uh, they're a little small, for like a walleye or something. Yeah, these are these are good panfish. They're smaller. I was thinking they were bigger in the package. That's definitely a panfish thing. You can get trout on that too, but I'm gonna primarily throw this for panfish and maybe crappie. The the size of that, I'm thinking maybe a one sixteenth jig head. I try to look for the smallest green sunfish I can find since bass are finicky about sunfish. Okay. 
that's probably what I do wrong because I don't catch a lot of uh, bass when I do live sunfish. I'm probably doing too big of sunfish. If you remember my fish brain post back in the day when I had that crawdad trap, I just put it out for fun. I never got any crawdads. I was getting fish that big. That'd be perfect for bait like you're talking about. Trout is one of my favorite freshwater fish too. B Backwoods barbarian, you mean to eat, you mean to fight because I love, they're delicious and I love catching them and they're beautiful. They're just freaking beautiful. Like my Instagram is like literally 90% trout because they're so freaking beautiful. What up, fish slayer, fresh water? Welcome back. We're talking about some pan fish and trout jigs right now. And these were the Janko fishing afterburners. Put that on like a 1 16th jig head. 1 32nd maybe might be a little small, but they're white and the tail is the interesting thing to me. It's got a lot of action. So for green sunfish, we were just talking about for bait. You know, the first thing I would do with this before even fishing it, I would clip half that tail off for the green sunfish because they are so infamous for grabbing the tail of your of your jig. Enough for you to feel it and think that they're biting and then either not get the hook set or not get the hook set and they rip your whole tail off anyway for you. Looks like a beaver tail jig. That's That might be what that's called. Is that a beaver tail, guys? I don't know. I wouldn't call that a beaver tail, but I don't know what a beaver tail is. Just like the shape it's more like i don't know what you would call that but everything about trout you can go a whole day and never get two that fight the same yeah dude it's crazy I, my best day of trout ever i caught 54 trout in one day but it was a stocked river so that's kind of i guess you call that cheating it was it was an insane day though i normally go out there and i'll catch a couple i don't know about mystery tackle box anymore man they left me on <laughs> they left me on red on ig does that mean they didn't answer you when you chatted them or something? <laughs> I don't. I feel like they wouldn't answer me either. They're pretty big for that. All right. This last thing I'm excited about. This one was so special that they included like I don't know where I put it. Yeah, they included a thing for it. It is MTB Hat Guys Monthly Spotlight. The hyper, the Acme Hyperglide. I love trout fishing too, Caribou Country Outdoors. Check out my channel. I have a few trout videos. and I'm going to make some better ones and some more ones soon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> fishing, man. They didn't answer you, man. They left you on red. So MTB Hat Guys Monthly Spotlight. It is called the Acme Tackle Hyperglide. It has – I'm going to show you guys real quick what it looks like in the packet. This thing is listed as $8.99. So that's why like, this thing looks so sick. And you'll be able to see it a lot better out of the package. It's got a hook on each end and then the treble and some type of little blade thing it looks like. But it's like it's like a jig. No, it doesn't have a blade. I'll show you guys. Ooh, this thing I'm interested in, I being a $9 bait, I'm still going to throw it. But I'm very, like, scared that this thing is going to get snagged because I, I get snagged all the time. I throw my favorite Panther Martin spinners, and I lose, like, two, three a day when I'm trout fishing for just a few hours. They really don't want you to get hooked on this thing. They got it all wrapped up. Or maybe they do want you to get hooked. I feel like I'm going to stab myself. Ah, yep, we got a trouble in me. Just barely. All right, guys, while you watch me fumble around with this, go ahead and comment if you fished anything like this. Those things are money. Really? Ice fishing? No. I'm ice fishing in five feet of water. I'm going to snag this. I can't. Unidentified user. Try to convince me that this... Like, you have a couple – go ahead and try to make your case why I should take this ice fishing because I think this is awesome. Is this really something that nah, – I guess you can jig that. I don't know. I'm going to be fishing in shallow water, and I'm going to snag this thing. Maybe I'll take it ice fishing, whatever. You guys can get some free lures if you peep my channel. I've been hooking up tons of people. All right. That's what Funkin' CT said. I haven't checked out the channel yet, so I don't know anything about that, but you guys can if you want. Bye, NKR. Those things are for ice fishing. Oh, well, then I'll bring it for ice fishing. It has. I'm just, I'm going to lose this tomorrow. So everyone say hi to this thing and say bye to it because I will no longer have this item after tomorrow. I'm 100% going to snag this and lose it. I used them to catch Connors in the Atlantic. I'm fishing in Missouri. That's, that's awesome. Yeah, for sure. That's really cool. I'm fishing in Missouri, so I won't be getting anything like that. Sweet looking lure for deeper water, jig hard. Yeah, see, he says deeper water. That makes me not want to throw it. I'm going to be in like four feet of water ice fishing. Ain't no, ain't no deeper water. Look at these wings. Can I show you guys this? Like, this is the bait. Ah, and I don't know if you can see this. It's got like, 
It's got wings. They flap. I don't know how to show you. Look at these wings. They open and they close. And they open and they close. So when it's jiggling up and down, it's like flying. These wings, the wings are flying. That thing's cool. I'm taking it ice fishing for sure. Everyone's saying they're great. What up, Henry Harrington again? Yeah, this is the one more time. This was the, the last one in the package. The Acme Tackle Hyperglide. And it is the Mystery Tackle Box Hat Guys Monthly Spotlight. I'll just go ahead and read everything it says here. Um, flared out wings on the fall creates a darting action for sure. Wings retract on the rise for a smooth and steady jig stroke. All right. Because, yeah, when you, sometimes you got blades and all this extra crap going on on your jigs. And it's, uh, it feels weird sometimes when you're jigging them. So I think it should feel good. The Acme, something called the Acme Hyperglide better feel good when you fish it. You get like Hyperglide. That just sounds like something that's going to be awesome. The one with the weird tail like a plane. That's a walleye lure. Yeah, there's no walleye at all where I'm going to be fishing. So if this catches anything, it's going to be a trout or a panfish. Maybe, maybe, maybe a bass. Buy NKR again. <laughs> he said buy with a question mark. Yes, buy. The answer is yes if you're looking. If you're asking it as a question. Have a good night, man. I'll see you soon. Join us on Tuesday on Sharp Fishing TV's channel for Multispecies Weekly. Yeah, it does. This looks like a plane to me. Like the tail, it looks like the tail of a plane. Ah, I keep showing it off the screen. Look at that. It's got tail fins and it's got wings, which make it look even more like a plane. So, yes, you've convinced me. I will take this ice fishing. It's not going to catch a walleye because there ain't no walleyes where I'm going. It's like there's not supposed to be walleyes where I'm going. I'm going to say that and catch a walleye tomorrow. Which would be awesome because I've never caught a walleye. I've never specifically fished for walleye though. That's something that I'm definitely going to do this year. So I'm going to bring everything I've opened so far except for those hooks um, out of this tackle box tomorrow when I go ice fishing. So one more time, that was the sticker. Henry Harrington, later. Later, man. If you want to see the last tackle box, you can always watch the replay. This will be up on my channel probably immediately after um, the live stream ends. What is a Connor? That's a really good question. I did not ask Backwood Barbarian. So in a second, I'm going to review as quickly as I can everything that was in this tackle box before we move on to the next one. But Backwoods Barbarian, man, if you're still in the house, go ahead and comment. Let us know what a Connor is. I, I don't have my, uh, my laptop set up, so I can't do research. Next time you guys join me on a live, I'll have a laptop with me if I'm not streaming from it. So I'll be able to look up anything. I love to be able to just have the resource of the Internet at my disposal when I'm doing these live streams so that if there's something I don't know, I can look it up. Like last time we were looking up bass spawn times in different places and I was giving everybody some good information. I was getting some good information. All right. I might be dealing with a little bit of a delay because I'm not getting anything in the chat. Um, if anyone knows what a conner is, I'm assuming it's a type of saltwater fish. Go ahead and comment. But just in case you guys are commenting and I'm just not, I'm just like getting a delay and I'm not, uh, I caught a fish in Canada. All right, everybody. Everybody pause real quick. I caught a fish in Canada is in the house. He, his name is Johnny, I believe. He's an awesome, awesome, awesome guy. Please go check out his channel. Like, he literally, he makes really, really good, like, cinematic style films. And he he, he said his plan is going to be to keep going on with that theme. And his fishing videos are awesome. And, dude... He's got the best mentality out there. Like, it literally, he's all about getting out there, having a good time, enjoying nature, and not, you know, not taking any, anything for granted and trying to enjoy everything you can. He, he loves nature just as much as I do. And the first time I saw his channel, I thought he was an awesome guy. I, I just definitely check him out for sure. NKR said he'll stay till 11. NKR, if you got class or something in the morning, that ain't no big deal, man. You don't have to stay. But I do appreciate you staying if you're going to. Fish Slayer Freshwater said, how long are you going to stream? I got one more mystery tackle box to open. So I'm going to open the last one, and then I will probably end it and try to edit some video if I get time, unless anyone wants to, I don't know, talk about anything or something. It's a ras. Is that what you're, a uh, ras is a type of, uh, uh, the Connor is a type of ras. Okay. Yeah, it's definitely a saltwater fish. Let me scroll down. I think a Connor is a ras. Okay, okay. NKR said, no, I'm okay. Cool, man. What up, Eric Burnside? Thanks for joining in. Eric Burnside, we opened a mystery tackle box um, at the beginning of this live stream that I got from Loop Cranes Outdoors. Connor or Cunner, a saltwater predatory fish. 
with a small mouth type. What? With a small piranha type mouth, it looks like a bass. All right. Well, everybody go look up Connor or Connor. Look up Connor Fish right now. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Look that up because I'm going to do that after this is over. I'm going to write that down. Just, just for my pure interest, Connor Fish. That's cool. Yeah, you said – what did you say you catch uh, Connors on? You said on the hyperglide type of thing? You said you use something like that, like the hyperglide that I just showed everybody. If anyone didn't see that, this thing's crazy. It's got wings. It's a bait with wings, man. It's for jigging. When it goes up, it goes up smooth, and when it goes down, the wings flap. It's for, like, ice fishing and walleye fishing and stuff. But apparently you can use it for – I'm going to come back in a while if possible. For sure, Fish Slayer. No one ever feel bad. What up, Backbones Outdoors? How was the unboxing? Hey, Backbone Outdoors, we unboxed two mystery tackle boxes, and we got a third one we're going to unbox, and it's bass. So it's not over yet. We got 18 people in here. We're going to open one more. Sunfish King, can you speak German? I'll translate it. I cannot. I know nine means no. I know a couple bad words I'm not going to say. And I'm not going to try to say anything else because they might end up being bad words. So, no, I do not speak German. I think it's really awesome when people are bilingual, trilingual, multilingual, can speak different languages. I know a tiny bit of French and Spanish, but not enough not to embarrass myself. And then I've got um, Taiwanese people in the family who speak, I, be I believe, Mandarin. NKR, that's cool, though. The Newfoundland bass fish. Haha, -ha, we don't have bass in Newfoundland. Oh, that's that's very interesting. You don't have bass. That's why you don't know much about bass. Backwoods Barbarian, I'm definitely going to check out your channel more. So I just joined last night. So I need to check out more of your videos, and I'll get more of an idea of what you got going on. But definitely seem like a cool dude, man. And I appreciate Apparently, you are the one who caused the raid, which is, I still say, the reason why I got 16 people in here right now. So thank you so much, man. I'm glad to know you. NKR, can you speak German? Yeah, he said he can. Hello, my friend. Um, good night. Super good, super great fisher. What does that mean? Hello, my hello, my friend. Good night. Super something fisher or fisherman. Tell me what class means in KR because I think I translated that pretty well. Anyway, guys, this isn't a German class. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get to the next one after I show you guys what was in here. But we got again one last time. This was the Ac Acme Tackle Hyperglide, and this was like the featured bait in the pan fishing and trout box for a uh, mystery tackle box this month. It's an $8 and 99 cent bait and it's for ice fishing, for jigging, for walleye, probably trout and panfish as well. And I'm going to probably use this tomorrow in a live stream on forward fishing's channel. So go to forward fishing, go ahead and join uh, his crew to go and, you know, anchor to him, hook set, whatever you want to say so that tomorrow you can check out our live fishing tournament. All right. And then this, the, of uh, the last other bait, the last bait from the other box, or I guess the next bait, I should say, not the last one. We got a couple more to go through. The next bait, I'm just recapping for everyone who didn't see what was in here before we get to the last mystery tackle box, the third one. We had some, they're called Big Nasty AB. I don't know why they're Big Nasty because they're only uh, size six. But these are panfish and crappie, uh, you know, hooks for live bait, for natural bait, different stuff like that. Hey, what are you streaming on, says back, Backbone Outdoors? So yeah, this is a 10-pack. This is only $1.99. So there wasn't anything that I could really rig with this. I'm going to use this for worms and stuff like that. I might use these for carp with uh, corn, et cetera. But Backbone Outdoors, what am I streaming on? I'm streaming on StreamYard. So everybody, uh, if you want to stream on your phone, you can go to StreamYard.com, make an account, link your YouTube channel, and it is pretty easy, actually. I uh, The only reason I was a couple minutes late to this stream is because when I joined in, I did it wrong, and I joined in as a guest on my own channel, and I couldn't figure out how to let myself in, which is hilarious. You guys can go ahead and laugh at me for that. But I was a couple minutes late because I was in as a guest, and I was like, why is this thing not starting? I was like, oh, crap, so I had to get out and get back in. But it's pretty easy. Backbones outdoor, dear Lord, look at the screen. What happened? <laughs> Learning how to bass fish this summer. Oh, yeah, I missed a couple things. He said guten tag. I don't know what that means. Good something. I know it's a greeting. We'll be learning how to bass fish this summer. I'm actually learning here right now, so thank you for the kind words. No, Backwoods, thank you, man. Very, very cool guy. Everyone check out Backwoods for sure. StreamYard won't let me stream. I got banned. Backbone, what did you do to get banned from StreamYard? 
All right, NKR, I can't tell what you're saying, but that's super awesome that you speak German. All right, guys, I'm going to go over these couple things, and I want to get to the next tackle box. I don't want to drag this thing on too long. I don't want to lose too many people who are like, hey, this guy said he was going to talk Bates, and he's not talking Bates. So feel free to go ahead and say what you want in the chat, and I'll try to acknowledge it. But a couple more items we got in the one we just opened, if you weren't joining in for that, the Jenko Fishing Afterburner. And these are, what is it? It's a 12 count. They're white. They look kind of like what someone said was a beaver tail jig. And they're going to be for panfish and stuff like that. Put them with like a 1 16th or 1 8th. 1 8th ounce is a little heavy, but a jig head. And just jig those. Vertical jig from docks, from kayaks, or one, you know, you when you got open water, toss them out from the bank or get in a boat and toss them at the bank. Um, we got two more items. These, all these items I'm going to be bringing tomorrow on my live fishing thing on Forward Fishing's channel. I'm going to be trying some ice fishing unless I can find open water. But these are the Jenko, no, the Lucky, I'm so sorry. These are the Lucky John Ultra Worms. And these were in chartreuse. I'm just recapping these real quick. Sorry, everybody who already saw them. I just want to show everybody real quick before we get to the next one. Got a bunch of ridges in it. I can, I can smell this from here, man. That's crazy. Like This thing smells strong. It says it's got shrimp uh, scent on it. So that thing should do good tomorrow. I'm definitely going to try that for a bit tomorrow in my live, my live stream fishing. So Caribou County said there's also a lake here, Backwoods Bassin or Backwoods Barbarian, sorry, that I pulled a 30 pound lingcod out of. Oh my gosh. I have seen one of those. Ugly as heck. I think they're cool. I mean, they're ugly, but I think they're so cool. The beaver tail is going to catch some fish. I hope so, man. I really, I'm going to use all of those baits tomorrow when I'm doing my fishing for trout. I can't really I, – I don't feel comfortable trying to get a spinner to actually spin the blade when I'm only fishing in a couple feet of water. So I'm going to throw in all that stuff. NKR said he's – I thought you were staying until 11. <laughs> That's fine. Those look good. Uh, were you talking about these ones, uh, Magnus? Thanks for joining, Magnus. I didn't see you were in here. I don't know when you joined in, but what's up, man? We're, we're, we're recapping what was in the panfish and trout box before we opened the, uh, the bass box. Is that the same as burbot? Burbot's kind of like a catfish, isn't it? Like a cold water northern catfish looking thing. I think it looks like a catfish. I could be wrong. Backbone, don't ever call me a. All right. Good night. All right. So that's definitely going to be used tomorrow. And then the, la the other item, the last item, this is a Jenko Fishing Kevin Rogers hand tied jig. There's three of them in here. This was $6.25 for the three of them. And these are getting used tomorrow for some for some ice fishing, for some pan fish, for some trout. And if I caught a bass, I would just be absolutely stoked. But they're white. They got a yellow. These are actually feathers. These are like, I don't know if they're real feathers or fake feathers, but these are like actual feathers. And then there's a little bit of sparkles on them and a white head. I don't know the the, the weight. It's a 1 16th ounce. It's a 1 16th ounce, guys. So I'm going to be doing that through the ice tomorrow. And that's called the Warbird, the Kevin Rogers Warbird hand-tied jig. What's up, Snags and Drags? Apparently someone – Snags and Drags, what's up? To anybody who I didn't say what's up to, sorry if I miss you. Um, for some reason on the computer, it's so much easier for me to see the chat while I'm talking to you guys. On my phone, I get distracted looking at other stuff. Maybe it's because I'm doing the unboxing. I've got so much stuff in my hand. NKR, that'd be awesome. I, I want to travel all over. Um, that's part of the reason why I'm, doing, why I'm in school for wildlife research is I want to travel all over and not just experience different places and different cultures, but experience the outdoors, the wildlife, the animals and plants of different places. So I love traveling and stuff like that. How's it going, Snags and Drags? We just, uh, we just opened a bass uh, mystery tackle box from Luke Crane's Outdoors on YouTube. Check him out. We just opened a... Uh, panfish and trout mystery tackle box which was the second one and i know this thing is titled two mystery tackle boxes unboxing but i like to throw a surprise in there and mix it up a little bit i got a third mystery tackle box and everybody is just hoping praying as much as i am that it's not the same mystery tackle box as the other one the other one was from luke crane this one is from uh me like i bought the subscription myself so i don't know if they're gonna be the same or not i really hope not if they're not i'm still gonna can you tell me how you grow some so fast? I was telling Fish and ATX this. I said, you just got to upload videos. You got to make sure your content is consistent. Make sure it's good. My, my content isn't always consistent good, but it's going to be from now on. I released a couple of videos at the beginning that were iffy. But you, you got to get better at 
editing, your filming has to be at least decent. Um, as you can see right now, my lighting's okay. It's a little bright and it's causing a little bit of a glare, but this live stream probably looks a lot better. Like if you were to hop in, that's probably half the reason I was able to maintain 10 people in here because I've hopped into a live stream and it's just so dark in the guy's room. You're like, I can't see anything. And that would go really bad with the mystery tackle box opening. And then, so just do some research and analytics. I won't talk about that as much, but uh, networking too. get, get social media, share your stuff. Don't beg for subs and make it about the content, not about the subs. I want to go pike fishing in Ireland. Magnus. That sounds so awesome. I'm super Irish. If you guys can't tell by the red hair and everything, but I'm super Irish and I would love to go to Ireland. It's a beautiful, beautiful place. Go to England and Germany too. They have awesome carp fishing there. People are actually getting mad like the predator fishermen around England and stuff, because apparently they just freaking load all the waters with carp because there's so many carp fishermen these days. <laughs> I'd still like to go there and catch some. All right. Backbone and NKR, let's keep it civil, please, guys. I don't know how to block people, but I can figure it out quick. I don't think I'm going to have to, though, because you guys are going to keep it cool from now on. Um, I'm sure you guys are just joking around, but to other people, it might seem like you're not. We got one more tackle box. We're going on an hour and 10 minutes right now. We're about to open the bass tackle box, everybody. Yep, NKR, you're good. Backbones, you're good. I appreciate you guys joining in. I just want to... I've never had an issue on a live stream before, um, but I've been on somebody's live stream where someone joined in there saying a bunch of nasty crap. And I want to, you know, I want to make sure that doesn't happen on mine. And if it does, I want to know how to block people, but I'm not saying I'm gonna block anybody in here. You guys are cool. Hey man, what websites or who made your merchandise? Uh, before we open this last one, I will answer that the couple questions that are in here. Um, my stickers are from carstickers.com. And I've got a few different designs, but basically they look like this. It says Sunfish King. It's the same thing that's on my hoodie. And this is the Amer ah, this is the America one. It says USA. You can't see the S because it's white. But patriotic as it gets. And then I got a whole bunch of other, just basically a bunch of other colors of those ones. And some Sunfish King productions. You can't see them because it's freaking white. Anyway, I got a bunch of different ones. Those all came from carstickers.com so that's where i got my stickers and then i have another youtube sticker that just came from like some google search that i got but my uh my hoodies i actually got the tag right here they have a couple different colors of hoodies and just comment on one of my youtube videos if anyone's interested in anything but yeah and my hats all that came from uh custom ink so this is what the company looks like for that hopefully they sponsor me for shouting them out like this <laughs> but yeah custom ink um, it's, it's one of those things. If you go to look at the price of one item, you're like, dude, I could never afford that. And then the second you're buying 10 of them, they're half, half the price. So it's one of those things, the more you buy, the cheaper it is. How are your merch sales? Um, I have, I'm the, I'm the guy who has 300 subs and started doing merch already. So I wasn't expecting to have like a million sales and stuff like that. I've got two or three super happy customers on fish brain that have bought hats from me. Um, I, I got another person not related with fish brain who's bought some hats and I've got some other people that I'm talking to now. Uh, I got someone who bought a sticker from me. I, I might've only sold one sticker, but I, uh, it was one of these Sunfish King stickers, but I got, a uh, I got all those new stickers just came. So I haven't even like told people they're for sale yet. Officially. I haven't made a video about it or whatever. Um, but again, yeah, my merch sales, they're they are all right. I'm happy that I'm selling anything. A lot of my merch was just so I can wear it because it looks super cool. Um, I'm sure if I get, like, you know, a lot more subs, then I'll, it'll pick up a little bit. Thanks, Snags and Drags. So without further ado, everybody, you guys joined in for one reason only, and that was to see what is inside this mystery tackle box right here. Am I right? Am I right? So before I open the mystery tackle box, I need at least one woo-woo from the chat. Let's get a woo-woo. Anybody. NKR stands for, I think it's Noah something. I could be wrong though. NKR, I, I do want to know what NKR stands for. And I do need a woo woo from the chat. Still waiting for my woo woo. Because I, I could just put this tackle box away. We could end this. Woo 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 woo! <laughs> and I got a yee yee from Jeremy All Britain. I don't know how this mic is. So if I just screamed and it like destroyed your ears, I'm so sorry. Snags and drags. I'm getting a lot of woo-woos right now. So you guys want to see the bass baits, I'm assuming. Thank you for that. I like the interactive factor of it for sure. 
I've joined live streams before where it's two dudes talking or two dudes fishing or one guy doing whatever, and they just never look at the chat. It's like, why are you? What's the point, man? You you got this many people in the chat room. You got to interact with them. I thank you, Johnny, for saying woo woo. Um, and everyone, the fi- the uh, the secrets out. NKR stands for Noah Kingston Royster. Well, thanks for letting us know, uh, Noah. Thanks for letting us know, NKR. We appreciate it, man. I've always wondered what NKR stood for. It's one of the mysteries of life. Ua Ua seems to be the new thing my kids say. Ua Ua or Awa Awa. How do you pronounce that? Yeah, Noah Kingston Royster. Join the Royster squad. (laughs) Oh, yeah. All right, guys. Let's open this box because I got a lot of woo-woos from everybody. I appreciate that. This first thing looks awesome. I might not show that yet. I might not show the first thing until the last thing. Yeah, let's do it this way. Number one, again, Mystery Tackle Box likes to do this. They like to get you all excited that you're going to get five or six baits, and then one of them ends up being hooks. But guess what, guys? You can't fish without good hooks, so I'm happy to get these. Making its Harmony Fishing Company. I'm going to get the thing out so I can tell you what they are called. Harmony Fishing Company Razor Series Offset Worm Hooks. And these are smaller looking. It literally doesn't say whether they're 2 aught, 3 aught, 4 aught. I'll open them up. But this, I'm going to use these for my Wacky Rig Worms. And honestly, I use them for my Texas rig too. I want to try that thing where people use the little circle hooks and an O-ring and make their worms last a lot longer where they're just hooking like the O-ring or whatever. I want to try that for sure. But I need to get some small circle hooks for it. So that's what these look like. Offset worm hook. That's good for a Texas rig right there. I do the Texas rig and then I just I throw it on there uh, wacky too. I just use the same hook. It really doesn't bother me. But I am going to try the circle hook and O-ring thing. What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? Sorry if I missed anything. It's the way the little dog on TikTok barks, LOL. I don't have a TikTok. I am the I am the like least technologically savvy person in here. The only reason I got a Instagram was for my channel. And I now I like Instagram. It's cool. But NKR, we know you're a country boy. I trust you. Nothing better than a nothing better than a country boy. You unidentified user said no. Um, unidentified user, let us know what you're saying no to. I think I missed out on something. Henry Harrington is back and tired. Henry Harrington, we, we are doing the last mystery tackle box right now. Only a couple, only like three or four items left. So this thing will be wrapped up around an hour and 30 minutes, I would I would guess. So that's a, uh, we got three of those Harmony Fishing Company Razor Series Offset Worm Hooks. Um, NKR got the mystery tackle box from Walmart. Oh, they didn't sell them at my Walmart. You need to renew your subscription. Yeah, I won the Mystery Tackle Box, the first one from uh, from Luke Crane's Outdoors, which is super awesome. And then, um, and then I signed up for the bass one, and I saw they had a panfish and trout one. I tried to buy them both at once, and uh, if you try to buy two different Mystery Tackle Boxes at once, it won't let you place that order. It'll say you can't do two subscriptions at once, but all you do is you just purchase one, then you leave. Then you come back and do another order and do the other one, and it'll work that way. And then you can look in your channel, it'll say my subscriptions, and it'll show you. Like, you're clearly allowed to have multiple. It just doesn't let you buy multiple at once. You swear you li- you lived in Jasper, Alabama? Why specifically Jasper, Alabama, NKR? So, yeah, let's get to something besides hooks here. Hooks are good and all. They're, they're, they're laser sharp. Or razor, razor series, sorry. But we want to talk baits, guys. We want to talk hooks here. The all right, we got the Excite Baits Raptor Tail Worm. Raptor Tail, oh my goodness, look at that thing. It is in a, it says high floater. That can't be the color. <laughs> That's got to just be something about it. It's not giving me, unless high floater is the color, it's not giving me a color on it. But it is the Excite Baits. Raptor tail worm, and it looks like a green pumpkin type of thing. I don't know. It's green, and it's got black specks on it. The tail is the crazy part, though. This is a 
Of course, it's not going to tell you how long it is. It looks like a seven inch worm. That's a seven inch worm. I can tell just by looking at it. But look at the tail. Like, you guys see that? It looks wrong. There's a little ball on the end, too. But yeah, that's very interesting. That's going to get Texas rigged for sure in the ponds and the lakes. Has anyone thrown anything with a tail like this? Go ahead and comment in the chat. Sunfish King, I want to send you something soon. I'll text you on fish brain. You don't need to send me nothing, man. You don't, no one has to send me nothing. The reason why I made that video was in case, and I got a couple people who are doing it, um, who want to send me some homemade baits, hand tied jigs, homemade uh, home poured soft plastics, and they want me to use them in my videos and then say, yo, I got this from this guy. I just caught this dang hog on it. So it's good for both of us. That's why I made that thing. I didn't make it to try to get any free stuff out of anybody, you know, just for no reason. If you want to send me something, why don't you like draw me a picture or write me a letter? I don't need you spending money on me, man. I really appreciate that. But yeah, what color would you guys call this guy? It's green and it's got the black spots. Would you call that green pumpkin or would you call that? What would you guys call that? Curly tails? Yeah, it's it's a raptor. I mean, it. maybe you guys can see it better if I do this. It is a curly tail, but it's very interesting. It's very thin. It's got a weird action. It's got a ball on the end. But, yeah, it is a curly tail type of worm for sure. This is probably something I'd throw in the summer maybe. it's. I like the big 12-inch, like, curly tail, motor oil colored, like, power worms when it comes to summer. But I think this would do pretty good too. Green pumpkin. Thanks, guys. I'm not great with the names when it comes to that stuff, but I think I, think, um, I had that one down. I know there's like green watermelon, green pumpkin. There's all this different stuff. So that was, um, let's see how much they have that listed as costing. They have that as a $4 and for some reason, five cent, because that's really important to add the five cents in there. $4 and five cent bait. Excite baits. It was called the raptor tail worm. So had the harmony hooks and the raptor tail worm so far. And we got, it looks like, Three more things in here. Is that right? Yes, it is. Another one of the Dibble Tips and Tricks books. Let's see if there's anything I want to read to you guys from this one. Nope, it's all too long. There's uh, stuff about the rooster tail. There's stuff about cold water bassin, which I do need to read because I didn't do very much good cold water bassin. And then there's something called How to Hide Your Fish in Secrets. It's not funny enough to read, though, guys, so I'm going to save you from that one. It's all right, but it's basically just every answer was just a wishy-washy answer. Like, don't share your fishing secrets is the moral of the code. Basically saying, what did you catch it on? Oh, you know, I caught it on a little of this, a little of that. Same thing I tell people when they ask me where I caught uh, a fish if I was in a honey hole. I'm like, oh, you know, it was in the water. NKR, where are you seeing Backbone Outdoors? Backbone Outdoors was in here for sure. Yeah, back when Outdoors is in here, he just said, okay, he's in here. All right, so the next thing we're going to do, we got three more items here, guys. Really, for some reason, so this is a five-pack of green green pumpkin crawls. They're only $2.49, so I don't know if that's a good price or not. To me, that's, that seems like a pretty decent price, honestly. Um, $2.49 for a five-pack of Cream Lures Pro Series Crawl. So these look big. I could probably – green pumpkin. That's what the package looks like, cream lures. You probably bought something from them before. Um, yes, yeah, the green pumpkin. And that could probably get – If I, I would probably cut a little off here off the body, and I could probably pair that with the, uh, the peanut butter and jelly, the catch company jig that I got in that first tackle box I opened. That's a little bit of an odd color combo, but I think it, yeah, that'll work. Oh my goodness, what is up, man? If you guys, um, the NorQ person, that is like my homie. That is the homie. Um, I don't think he has a YouTube channel, so you can subscribe to him or not, but he doesn't make videos. But he's on Fish Brain. Uh, it's like Obama Bin Fishing or something like that. Yeah, it's Obama Bin Fishing. But check him out if you got a Fish Brain. That is my dude. What's up, man? I'm so glad you joined it. Like anise or coffee scented. To me, most of the time it says it's something scented. It's like – it smells like a soft plastic. But um, I will tell you that it doesn't say anything about being scented on it, so I'm going to say it's not. Um, we had a couple scented things already. Something was shrimp scented. 
See, Magnus, that's the one thing I won't do. <laughs> I never tell someone the wrong spot. That's savage, though. Like, especially on fish brain, like, if you post the wrong spot or tell someone the wrong spot, that's going to mess with people actually trying to figure out where stuff is, which is fine. I mean, you can tell someone the wrong spot, but yeah, yeah, Nora, you're awesome, dude. Um, but when when someone asks, yeah, I uh, I won't lead someone astray, but I just won't tell them. It, it, you're fine, you know, do you. NKR just joined on his second account. What's up, man? What do we got? Switch to live stat instead of top chat. I don't know what top chat is. I don't like spot burning. Yeah, no, I, I'm not saying that I'll tell people the spot. I definitely won't. I just don't want I, I, You send someone to the next spot with horrible fishing. I don't know. You could ruin a spot. I don't know. Um, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. I just think everyone's got their personal preference. Everyone comment in the chat. If someone asks you where you caught a fish, like in a picture you're posting or something, and you don't want to give it away, do you not answer? Do you tell them a completely different spot and just be a savage like Magnus? Or do you just, you know, just BS them and just be like, I, you know, I caught it in the water or I, I can't tell you. Some fish king micro fishing squad. Yeah, I'm going to do some micro fishing for sure this year. Definitely. Can you use those jigs for a swim bait too? So I would think everyone comment one, go ahead and answer that other question. And number two, Comment how you would fish this thing. I'm thinking, number one, use it as a trailer on a jig like this. I'm thinking, number two, you could even, and this might be a little ballsy, but you could cut a tiny bit off and make it flat and then stick like a Ned Brig head on there. So that way you'd be, think about that. The weight's going to be down here, and it's just going to kind of flap around in the current if there's any, and you just hop, hop, hopping it along the bottom. That would work. Um also, the third way, I would just stick a stick a hook through there like your Texas rig in it, put a bullet weight on there, or even do it weightless without one, and just slow retrieve it with some twitches, or like I say, hop it along the bottom. Any soft plastic, you can either hop along the bottom, or you can slow retrieve it with twitches, without twitches, speed changes. Ned rig for sure. Magnus, I'm going to try that. Yeah, I just need a bigger, my Ned heads are like, I think smaller ones, but. That'd definitely be a good Ned Rig bait popping along the bottom. Uh, rivers, stuff like that, creeks. Punch it through the weeds with a Texas rig. Yeah, what unidentified user? Would you use a one ounce or a two ounce or even more uh, weight? I would think like a two ounce would be perfect. What up, NKR? Joining in on everybody's thing. Uh, yeah, my man, you said that idea is fire. Which idea? You mean the uh, punching it through or the, the Ned Rig idea that I said where you're just hopping it along the bottom? Because I feel like with the weight and the way that goes, that'd be super sweet. Those are both good ideas, though. Sometimes, nicely said, the fun is to get outside. Yes, I Caught a Fish in Canada says, the fun is to get outside, explore, and discover new spots. That's so awesome. Like, I love creek fishing. I love just hiking along and just going to new spots. And a lot of times I'll pull over on the side of the road and fish under a bridge or something. They're like the same spot that most people pass every day and don't think of. I've had some of my best memories in that spot, random Creek on the side of the road. Fishing has definitely opened up a whole new appreciation for nature and everything. They, I already had some of, but not quite that many. Same Magnus. I need to pick up um, the Ned rig idea. What Ned, if anyone has any idea of what type of Ned heads or what brand, or what size that you think would work with that. I'm going to experiment with some different stuff because I think like that would work really well. I just haven't had a lot of success with the Ned Rig yet, and I know that I will this year because I fish a lot of creeks. Yeah, what's up, man? How it bounces on the bottom for sure. NKR says, what's up? Nor Q said, what's up? What's up? What's up, everybody? What's up? All right, let's get to the next one. We just talked about these cream craws and green pumpkin. $2.49 value. You guys might want to pick yourself up some of these. You can get them from Carl's Bait and Tackle, or you can probably – these are the type of baits that go on sale in Walmart at a certain time of year. I always see this cream one sitting there. So I don't know if it's because the brand isn't that great or what. I think they're decent, though. they got to be. It says cream king of baits. You're not going to call yourself the king of baits if you're not the king of the bait. But, yeah, $2.49 for, what is it, a five-pack? Yep, five-pack. And they're 3.75 inches, so just under four inches. Yeah, that is cheap, dude. Like, that's definitely a good deal. Neds are almost exclusively targeting smallies. I disagree on the identified user. I think, I think a lot of yeah, they're great for targeting smallies, and I think that was the original plan. 
But if you will only eat realistic negrid crawls, I think smallies are more picky, aren't they? From I, my understanding is you can catch any dang fish on a Ned Rig. Any predatory fish will bite on a Ned Rig is my understanding. I've heard that they're great multi-species bait. I know they're really good for smallies. You're not wrong about that at all. And I haven't, I don't have the experience with smallies because we don't have them right near me. I've caught one and it was like three hours away. But I'm going to take some trips this year. Oh, you got a $15 jerk bait in your last mystery tackle box? I have a $15 item in this box, guys. That's the last item I'm going to show you. So there is a $14.99 item in here. That's very cool that you got one of those, though. Oh, my goodness. What up, Josh? See, when I hear the Wizards game, I don't know if anyone can relate to this. But I, I'm sure you're talking about hockey or something. I don't really watch a lot of that. I think it's cool. Um, maybe maybe Wizards knows that basketball. I don't know, dude. Probably basketball. Either way, I used to watch a team called the Wizards. That was They're now called Sporting KC. I live in Kansas City. I live near Kansas City. Have you, anyone ever heard of Sporting KC, the soccer team? They used to be called the Wizards back in the day. So when I hear NBA, yeah, I, the second I said uh, hockey, I knew I was wrong. Um, NKR, I don't know. Good night, my friend. I don't know all the German you're saying, but thank you so much for joining in. Wizards basketball are, are okay. Savage. Yeah, uh, the Wizards were – they were a cool soccer team back in the day, and they just turned into Sporting KC, so they just changed their name. I thought the Wizards was kind of a cooler name. Okay, yeah, hockey – see, I would say the only team that I follow religiously, like, all their games is the Chiefs. I used to follow the Royals. Um, too many games, too busy. So now I'll watch them if I can, but I watch all the Chiefs games. LOL, bye. Good night, dude. Later, NKR. Let's go, New York Rangers. Yeah. I don't well, – I wouldn't even say I have a basketball team because the closest team to me is going to be Oklahoma City. And, you know, I I don't even follow them enough to know if they're good or not. What's on the list for your favorite bass baits? Hey, off the hook, how you doing, man? What's up, Judith and Dan Davis? For my – let everybody go ahead and comment. I've got two more things we're going to open here. And before I get to that, go ahead and comment and answer off the hook outdoors question. What's on the list for your favorite bass baits? And you guys better list some good stuff because I am going to write down Wizards win. All right, Josh. Good for you, man. We still suck, though. That's hilarious. What up, what up off the hook? Yeah, answer off the hook's question, man. I, I want to get a couple things to write down here. What are you guys' favorite all-time bass baits? I'll go ahead and answer and say – I'm a big fan of live worms. People think you can't catch big bass on live worms. You can catch big bass on live worms. Sometimes the bottom's better. Sometimes the float's better. But for my favorite, I will go. And I want to show you guys. Number one, it doesn't get any more classic than this. I've already got it on like a Texas rig thing. The Yum Dinger. Watermelon seed and pearl. And I really like that pearl on there. But five-inch worm, this is about as classic as it gets. Either Wacky or uh, Texas. I've got some big ones on there. And I got two more that I'll tell you guys about. But I want to write down. There's another type of Senko I really like to throw. If you guys are on my fish brain, you probably already know what color it is. Off the hook outdoors. Look at my last video. Look at my last, not short, but my last actual video on my channel. I have my, I, I say, please send me stuff. It's hilarious you should mention that. I say, please send me baits. I, um, that'd be awesome. I'll test them out for you and shout you out on all my social medias. And I will do my best to catch a fish on them and make a video about it. But yeah, for sure. Um, send, look up my email on there. If not, just comment on any of my other videos and I'll let you know. But I, I just actually came out with a video giving everyone my email for that. Georgia Fisherman, I just want to say again, thank you, Georgia Fisherman, for being such a great supporter. Georgia Fisherman is always commenting on my stuff and watching my videos, and I, I cannot literally express to you how much I appreciate that. Whether I ever become a big YouTuber or not, we never forget the people who supported us at the beginning. Thank you so much. Culprit Worm Grape in the sh Grape Shed. Culprit Worm in Grape Shed color. Sweet. Thank you for that. Oh, I got to go even further back. Oh, my goodness. Jeremy Albritton, thank you. Um, also, yeah, I appreciate everything you've contributed today, too, with the conversation. Hollow Belly Frog. Yes, sir. Or, yep. 
my top waters are usually on frogs. If that's, I'm sure, I'm assuming we're talking about the same top water frog, hollow inside. Maybe, maybe not. But I think you're talking about top water frogs. All my top waters have been on frogs. Magnus says Northland. I hope you guys are writing this down too. Everybody be learning something. These are these are everybody's favorite bass baits, and they didn't become their favorite bass baits for no reason. Northland. What does that say? Imic, imic, is that supposed to say mimic minnow or imic minnow? I'm guessing it's mimic, but I could be wrong. Let's say it's a mimic minnow. In perch color, everybody, we are learning about the best bass baits right now before we go over the last two items. Three inch. Let's see. Thank you, everybody who answered for sure. Senko. Oh, yeah. Senko, Senko, Senko all day. Last year, that's what I caught most of my bass on was a Senko, if not a live worm. So this year, I will try to get out of that, but I can't guarantee that I'm not going to fall back into at least some of my Senko habits. But when, as soon as we get open water, I'm going to be throwing cranks and jigs. I'm going to be trying with things that I don't normally catch fish on. I'd rather catch one-tenth as many fish this year on new baits and have them all be, you know, mostly be quality fish or whatever than catch a, another 5,000 fish like I did last year, have a bunch of them be small, and have them all be on the same bait because that's not really learning. You know, it's still having fun. Whoa, someone said, nor Q. Oh my gosh, I'm so far behind. Sorry guys that I got so behind on the uh, on the chat. I'm gonna try to catch up. I don't know if I can. Favorite bait is the Strike King five inch. I love Strike King. That's that's what I was gonna say. I guess I won't show it to you guys because we need to get moving. But Strike King Smoky Shad Shimmy Stick five inch. Check it out. My PB was on that. It was only three pound eleven ounce, but you know I'm not. I've been fishing that long. My PB was on that, and I'm more comfortable throwing that in most conditions than like any bait because it's caught me so many um five inch yeah that was strike king five inch anise scented that's cool um black blue speck dinger yeah that's not too much different i don't think than the uh than the strike king smoky shad that i throw it's black blue and white war eagle spinner bait thank you for that comment judith and dan davis Everybody be writing this stuff down. You're learning so much right now. Zuri sinking minnow. Yo, Zuri. Is it yo, Zuri? Or did you say yo, and then comma, and then Zuri? Sinking minnow. I'll look it up either way. I'll put the yo in parentheses. They're sturdy. Yeah, 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 man. I'll have to try this out. The Strike Kings, for me, they work better. Like, the Senkos do not last nearly as long as the Strike Kings. They attract fish. I'm sending you five inch. Yes, five inch stick baits. Uh, let's see. Off the hook outdoors. I'm gonna promise right now. I'm assuming that these are you know decently poured baits and everything like that. If these are good baits and they come to me in good shape, which I'm sure they will, I'm gonna guarantee you right now that I will I will grind until I catch at least one, if not twenty, somewhat quality fish on your baits, and I will make a video. I will shout you out. I will say thank you. Fish brain, Insta, Facebook, YouTube, fish angler. You get five social media shout outs. Have you ever tried Big Bite Baked Cinco? I don't think so. I'm writing that down. Is there a certain color of the Big Bite Baits Cinco, Jeremy, that you would recommend? Wow, I did not expect when I was doing this unboxing, one, for it to go an hour and a half, and two, for me to learn like 20 new baits that I need to go through. Zoom Trick Worm, yes. The Zoom Trick Worm is great. I agree. I don't know why I'm writing it down because I already know it's good. That's hilarious. I'd send you baits, but they're going to be open. <laughs> yeah, you don't need to send me baits. I'm not asking for free stuff. Harrison, what's up? Somehow I turned a Mystery Tackle Box unboxing video into a two-hour live stream almost, or hour and a half live stream. We've opened two so far, and we've just popped into the third one. Um, as soon as I answer these questions, I'll just really quick review the two that we've already opened and then get back into it. Sorry for everyone who's waiting to get on to the next one, but we turned this into a pretty cool – conversation about the best right now we're talking about the best bass baits when you say stanley ribbon is that the color that i was asking for i wrote that down georgia fisherman did you uh did, did georgia fisherman leave it says god bless georgia fisherman to uh, uh nor q said that if you did leave or if you are heading out thank you so much uh yeah bless you bless you man shoot man you stick around i talk a bunch lol <laughs> yeah, when I do these live streams, you can ask Harrison, Sharp Fishing TV, who's in there right now. You guys need to definitely go check out his channel if you haven't, because me and him do a lot of live streams together. We're going to be doing one every week on Tuesday. But when, when I do one with him, 
I think about two hours in, uh, him and then the other guy we do live streaming, I start, I start to see them getting tired and stuff like that. And for some reason, it just never happens to me. Like, I think five hours into a fishing live stream, I'd still be as wired as I am right now. Part of that might be because of the monster I'm drinking. But, I mean, just talking fishing, talking outdoors literally gets me charged. So I plan on doing plenty of live streams. Once the fishing gets good, I don't know how many live streams I can do, but I'm going to at least do one or two a week. Every, yeah, mimic. Any tips for fi fishing in thick weeds along a bank? Josh Jerson Jer said, any tips for fishing thick weeds along a bank? Besides punching, does anyone else have – besides punching or topwater? Oh, you're here, Georgia Fisherman? Okay. Well, bless you anyway, Georgia Fisherman, and thank you. <laughs> I thought you were heading out, but I guess I misread that, but bless you anyway. Fluke rig – and this is for heavy weed top – or, yeah, heavy weed cover – near the bank who said that yeah judith and dan davis thanks everyone who knows more than me who's in the who's in the chat right now um by the end of this year i probably know 10 times as much about bass than i know about now like i know 10 times more about bass than i did last year fluke rigged weightless and drag it through the weeds yeah um or even like a crawl would be good the fluke just has extra arms and stuff probably actually no a fluke that's not what i'm thinking i'm sorry the fluke is the one that looks like a fish um what was i thinking of that has all the arms on it more of a creature, just some some random type of creature bait. Yeah, Josh, throw your green Guggen frog on those head on that heavy cover. You'll probably get something. Anyway, fluke rigged weightless. I don't know why I'm lighting that down because I already know that works really well. We're gonna get back to the to the talking about what's in this thing pretty soon. Sorry, guys. I really appreciate it. Stanley Rivet is the bait. It's a swimming topwater frog. Stanley Rivet. That I normally fish in black neon. Black and neon on the uh on the bottom or is it just black on the bottom that's cool lol yeah you're crazy man if you're talking about me going all night <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm, this thing will probably i'm gonna call it right now this thing's probably gonna be around two hours unless i'm just like getting a bunch of questions or something like that but i'll probably do try to do some video editing after this i've got a two like 256 gigabyte hard drive that is like full of video right now and most of it's not even fishing it's just like i made so many announcement videos and merch stuff and uh outdoor stuff and i just really need to edit some of it and throw some of it away what's up Jaden danger how are you go ahead and comment since you're just joining in go ahead and comment your favorite bass bait to throw Yeah, man, I got to get some sleep. Oh, yeah, for sure. Uh, if you're heading out, that's fine, Jeremy. Jeremy, you have really contributed to this conversation, so thank you so much. If you're heading out, even if you're not, fist bump through the screen. Go ahead, do the screen fist bump. I'm out like a fat kid in dodgeball. Oof. Best bait for bass is leeches. Oh, see, I've heard leeches are really good for walleye. Wow, man, where can I get leeches? I'm sure a bait shop around here sells them. I don't know of any leeches like that. I go find wild in the lake because I try to, you know, stay away from places with leeches. Live leeches. Wow. Any other live baits that are good for bass? Comment. I know some people use actual frogs. I know I've used sunfish. I know people use minnows, creek chubs, other types of shiners and stuff. Y'all have a good one. Yes, you too, Jeremy. Thank you so much. I'm headed out. Enjoyed the live. Yeah, thank you. Um, go ahead and go ahead and uh, join me on Tuesday on Sharp Fishing TV's channel, or join Forward Fishing's channel tomorrow at uh, 2:30 Central Time or somewhere around there. We're doing a live fishing. It's going to be sick, and I'm going to be using a lot of the baits I got in the pan fish and trout package. Josh, the lunar cycle makes a huge difference fishing. Um, I know people will go out on a full moon during the during the night, like 2 a.m. midnight, something like that, and just tear it up. So the bite definitely is affected by the, by the moon. I, that's like the second time I've got that question. And maybe one of these uh, multi-species weeklies, we'll look it up and say exactly why the moon affects it and in what way it affects it. Because that's the that question has been brought up multiple times. Yeah. We have a pond on my sister's property. Uh, I caught a fish in Canada. I'll have to look for leeches, but I might have to get them from a shop or something. Um, Go ahead and let me know. How do you fish the leeches? Do you just throw them on the bottom and sit them there? Or do you jig them? Or do you put them under a float? If you're going to fish live leeches for bass or for any other fish, let me know how you're fishing them. 
I'm pretty sure you're going deep if you're fishing them for walleye. I love to throw a crappie, a crappie swim bait. Yeah. Let's just say there's something in, in this package that's really exciting that I'm going to open, guys. Very excited. Yeah, I think it does help. Uh, Harrison, what helps, man? What do you mean you think it does help? I'm getting too much. The chat's popping, which I, oh, my goodness, I love it. My chat, my chat's literally popping off. But, uh, oh, the, the, the lunar cycle. Yes. Yes, it does. 3.30 Eastern time, Josh, are you talking about for the lives tomorrow? Because I think that's what we're trying is 3.30 Eastern, 2.30 Central to go live, unless Harrison knows any more than I do. Um, I think that's what we're trying, 2.30 to like, I mean, 3.30 to 5.30, try to do a two-hour tournament so you can catch more fish, more species, and the biggest fish. I guess they would be good for bass, too. Yep, 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 yep. All right. So thanks, everybody, who commented. I just got – look at this. That's a solid list of baits I just wrote down, guys. Thank you. That's awesome. Magnus, you be quiet, all right? <laughs> you be quiet. I know, all right, Mystery Tackle Box Master. It might be. It might not. There's something cool in here. That's all I'm going to say. I like to throw a white spinner bait. Give me a second. When I when I think spinner baits, I'm a tr I'm a big trout panfish guy, so I'm normally throwing the little inline spinners. I know you're talking about for bass. Am I wrong or am I right? Is this a spinner bait? Is this a white spinner bait? When you say spinner bait, is that what you're talking about? Who's, who's Carl Van Dibble? Fish Slayer Freshwater is back again. What is up? I'm going to tell you this again. Join us Tuesday on Shark Fishing TV's channel. We're going to talk about that question you asked about live, about keeping fish and stuff. Right. Okay. Magnus says I'm right. Looks a little uh, beat up with the skirt and the head on there, but I think you could catch some fish on there. Now, who said, who said, because forward fishing lives on the East Coast. Yeah, no, it's going to be 3.30 East Coast, 2.30 Central. I just figured if I said 2.30 Central that people could figure that out. Mountain time, it's 1.30. I don't know anything besides that. Jaden Danger, what trailer? Do you throw a trailer with this? Do you throw it like it is? How does that work? Do you do, you do a trailer with spinnerbaits? Pretty sure that's like a preference thing. I don't know. I've never caught a bass on a spinnerbait like that. Believe it or not. I wish there's a way to do this where I'm not like touching the screen every time I have to go through the chat. So sorry, guys, that you just keep seeing my thumb. Jane Danger says no trailer. And Sharp Fishing says Kitek Swim Impact, no doubt. So trailer. And would you would you throw that with other color spinner baits too? That's just like your spinnerbait trailer, or is that specifically the white one? Trailer for – I'll just put spinnerbait. I'm assuming you mean it can work with a couple different colors. Trailer for spinnerbait, the Kai Tech Swim Impact. Okay. I'll have to try that for sure. Just like that. You don't fish it with any – yeah, I knew it was a preference thing. I knew you can fish it with a trailer or without. Now, is the way that you fish it, going to change whether you're using a trailer or not because i would assume if at all you're going to be doing probably more twitching and more yo-yoing type stuff if you have a trailer and more straight retrieving if you have the the no trailer option pearl colored trailer on a white and chartreuse interface pearl trailer and i know blue and black stuff works good too on a white and chartreuse. Chartreuse is a great color just for a lot of different fish. I use chartreuse power bait. I use chartreuse jigs. I use chartreuse on my cranks. Chartreuse is a good color. Wyatt Willis is in the house. What's up? You uh we're talking bass right now, and I'm actually I just opened a, a mystery tackle box, the third one. There's actually three, not two. And I'm gonna actually uh here in a second, I'm gonna review real quick the two items that we've already gone through. Two or three, I think three items that we've already gone through. And then I'm going to go ahead and talk about the two that I haven't yet. 
So thank you for joining so much, uh, Wyatt Willis. Josh Jerson said, do you own – hey, good night, uh, Fishing Canada left. When did that happen? Wow. Yes, bless you so much, Fishing with Canada. Uh, I caught a fish in Canada. When the weather gets better, make a video on how to catch leeches. Yes, that would be awesome. If you're still in here, thank you so much for joining. That's that's so awesome. I'd love to watch that. Your videos are really, really good. Pacific time? I don't know. Is Pacific time one hour before or two hours before mountain time? I would guess one. So it would be probably 1230 for you for the live stream. Everyone look – or someone look that up and confirm. But, yeah, good night to I Caught a Fish in Canada. Sorry that I keep putting my thumb on the screen. I really apologize. 35 likes. Yes. You guys are awesome. Jaden Danger has a million lures. Look, guys, I got 99 problems, but the fish ain't one. I use trailers most of the time, but when fishing slow, I just use plain – just the plain one. It gives it a more subtle action. So, like, winter, you would do it without a trailer. Seems like I should experiment with both. Seems like I should go out there and throw it a little bit without the trailer. If I don't get any bites, throw a trailer on and try it. Try the same way. Try fishing it a little different. But that's basically how you how you learn any new bait that you haven't thrown a lot. You go out there and you throw it different places, different um, actions, you know, and try it with different colored trailers if that's an option. And uh, just, you know, if something gets a hit, it probably was effective and you try to repeat that again. The red rattle trap is a great bait to throw. The only rattle trap I think I have is like a more silver and blue one. But yeah, I'll write that down. Red rattle trap. I wanna I wanna join that trap life. I wanna be out there steady trapping with the rattle trap this uh, this year more. Because one, it sounds cool to catch a bass and be like. We out here trapping. I don't know. It just sounds cool. And two, rattle traps are awesome. I, I use them a lot in this fishing video game, and I catch hogs in that game. And I know it's just a game, but I don't know. They're cool. Fish layer freshwater. I don't know what's – bass aren't doing nothing in my area because it's frozen. I can't even – it's bad. It's bad. Yeah, have a great night. I caught a fish in Canada. My favorite color is watermelon candy. That works for the best New Jersey murky waters. Yeah, watermelon candy for a color. Watermelon candy. For sure. Love the rattle trap. Oh, and I didn't say hi to Elliot Smith. What's up, man? This 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 person has me and him, me and Elliot have been following each other for quite a while on Fishbrain. So check out Elliot Smith fishing on Fishbrain. A lot of followers, a lot of good posts. Um catches these really beautiful uh smaller like native trouts and stuff all the time. I think they're native. Freaking awesome. Really, really cool dude. He's a younger guy who just out there grinding just as much as the next guy. He's going places for sure. Yeah, what's up, man? I saw that you had said something in there, and I was just in the middle of addressing something. Jaden Danger asks, have you ever caught a striper bass? Everyone comment their biggest striped bass if you've caught one. I have never. I've caught two white bass, zero wipers, and zero striped bass. And I did like look it up online how to identify to make sure that they were white bass. And they were both out of a river that I'm going to be fishing plenty come this this spring, this summer, this fall, as much as I can. So the hole, I kind of both have the same hole and they're both on worms, but I didn't realize how deep the hole was at the time. So now I'm going to go back there and fish it with more with more lures. And what do you guys think I should throw to try to get a white bass out of there? I'm thinking jigs, maybe cranks. Fish litter, freshwater. Great idea. All right. He says, have you done a video on bait versus lures? Yeah, they're native. I know. They're so beautiful, Elliot Smith. Fish layer freshwater, let me answer your question. Have I done a video on baits versus lures? I haven't at all. But here's my thing. Here's my idea. And I could do one for trout. Here, I have two ideas. When they stock trout, again, because they said they were going to stock them at the beginning of February, and then it's been frozen since then, so they haven't got the chance. As soon as it melts and they stock the trout, I'm going to call the hotline like every day. I will go out and do, I don't know, either in the morning and then afternoon or one day and the next day. I will fish with power bait one day and I'll fish with spinners the next day. And whether I fish for the same amount of time, I'll still like do some timed one hour period or something on my phone or on my watch. And I will figure out, did I catch more fish? Did I get more bites on the power bait versus the lures? 
because for me, a lot of times it just depends on what time of day. I feel like lures can entice a fish even during not eating times because it's just an instinct thing. And bait is more something that you need to get a hungry fish to be able to catch. But I have another idea as well. Have you got a sturgeon? No, I'm going to fish the Missouri River this year. I'm not going to say – that's one fish that I'm not planning on catching this year. I'm going to try. Um, you catch them the same way you would catch – Catfish, you can either use uh, use big hook, you use uh, worms, you use cut bait normally with most sturgeon species. So I will try, but, you know, I might get one. I might get a catfish. I might get a drum or a gar. Little Cleos. Uh, what do you mean by little Cleos, Magnus? You should use two rods, one with bait, one other one with a lure. I don't – That's that doesn't work, man. You got to watch – You gotta. I, I wash my rods, all right? When I'm using it in the water, I wash my rods. So earlier in the year, yeah, I had – I had some in with power bait while I was throwing a spinner for catching trout. But for that idea, no, you can't, you can't have one in the water and be throwing a lure. You will miss, you will miss just about every bite on that one. You got for trout. You got to be watching that thing. You guys will see in my live stream tomorrow. If I get on any trout, the bite is just like the rod just do bins and then it's done. Like they bite so freaking quickly. So I, I won't do that, but I'll fish one and then I'll fish the other. That way it's not because if I miss bites on one, the bait could have been better, but I just missed more bites. I want to give, I want to fish with a rod in with bait. I probably do all three rods with bait. Why not? Because that's one of the perks of bait is you can use multiple rods at once. You want to give all the pros and cons to all the different styles. So I'll probably fish a little bit with a couple of rods with bait and then fish with a lure for a little bit. I'll make a video like that. And I'm going to do it again with green sunfish here in a little bit. Um, maybe bluegills. But probably green sunfish. I'll try jigs for like 30 minutes and I'll try bait for 30 minutes. And I will almost guarantee right now that I'll catch more fish on bait, but a bigger average size of the fish I do catch on jigs. That would be my guess. Um, do trout? No, there's no trout in the creeks where I live. There's no, there's no wild trout at all here, man. What do you mean we did post today? Josh. Oh, he's talking to Josh. For white bass. Magnus, what for white bass? Ah, I know I asked that. What did Magnus say? Oh, little Cleos? I don't know what that is. I'm going to have to look that up. Little Cleos. I'm guessing that's some type of bait for white bass. For sure. Thanks. Thanks, thanks, thanks. No, just stock trout. Automatic fish hook setter. That's not fishing fish layer freshwater. <laughs> I'm not going to compare a robot to a human. I'm going to compare two different fishing styles. Sharp fishing and Josh. All right. We're, we're good. We're good. We're good. All right, guys. Here's what I'm going to do since I we got only six people in here. I think like six people left because they were like, this dude said he was going to do some unboxings. And now he's just talking baits. I love talking about fishing. So I got a little distracted. But right here, guys, what we're going to do. Have you been to... No, I have no idea where that is. I live in Missouri. Um, if that's in Missouri, then I've never heard of it. Lake Berryessa. That's a beautiful name, though. Better have some nice fish at a lake called Lake Berryessa. So real quick, anyone who joined in since we started this, this was the mystery tackle box, the third and final mystery tackle box that I'm going to open here. Why? Does anyone know why it's, uh, it still says Georgia Fisherman's comment up there? Oh, I clicked it. If you click someone's comment, it throws it on the screen. <laughs> Sorry, guys, that random comment's been up there forever. But yes, I'm go I, I have a couple more baits in here I haven't shown yet. What I have opened so far out of this bass tackle box here, you should go to the Pacific Coast to do salmon fishing. Pacific Coast salmon fishing. I have like 10 million things on my um, on my bucket list. And if I'm ever like super rich and I can just have unlimited time to do whatever I want, virtually unlimited time, I'll definitely knock everything off that list. But the first thing that we opened here, guys, was some more hooks. This is the Harmony Fishing Company Razor Series Offset Worm Hooks in um, – Again, they didn't tell me the size, but they look like a 2 odd or a 3 odd, if I were to guess. And these are really good. I already poked a hole through the package, so that's not good. But they're really good for your Texas rig. Kind of like how I have this rigged up. See how that's pretty much like you want that as straight of a line as you can 
on the hook. And that, that'll make sure that that happens right there. But you can also use it for wacky rig, whatever. Peacock bass. That's what I'm saying, man. That is high on the bucket list. My grandparents live in Florida. And I don't care if they're like three hours from the range of peacock bass. I will make a day trip to try for a peacock bass. I will go to a water that I know has peacock bass in it. And I will fish until I catch something. They're awesome. But the problem is in Florida, I think you can get to like cichlids down there and different sunfish species and stuff. That would be an awesome place to fish. Oh, my goodness. Can you Texas rig a real worm? Yeah, but you could text. I would get a big night crawler. Maybe I'll make a video like that. I don't know. When I use real worms, I always use a lot smaller hooks than I would use with a Texas rig. So there's no reason why you couldn't Texas rig a real worm. But for maximum effectiveness, if I'm using a worm, I'm going to go down on hook size a little bit. Fish layer freshwater. If you're in Pacific time, I think it's 1230. I could be wrong. Find out what 230 central time is in Pacific time. And you can find out tomorrow. Join in our live stream if you're not busy. It's in the middle of the day, so if you're busy, that's fine. Um, but you can watch afterwards. And thank you, Harrison. We're one like away from 40. Hit that thumbs, people. Thanks, Josh. Josh, why didn't you like – you just now hit the like, Josh. You're late, man. <laughs> I'm joking. Yeah, so you'll find out tomorrow if the ice in Missouri is good enough for ice fishing. Let me answer that question. Today I did some scoping out. All the lakes I went to were frozen over and no one was on them. Then I get to one lake, and there's a couple people walking on it. I don't know what they were doing, but they're just walking on it. Then I get to another one, and there was a guy ice fishing, standing on it. He was very close to the bank. Half of his gear was on the bank. Like his auger, he had, didn't even bring out there on the ice. Like he drilled the hole and then took his auger back because it was heavy. And I asked him how the fishing was, and he said it was slow, and he said the ice sucked. And he said, if you're going to come out here, just come in the morning and don't come in the afternoon. Well, it's literally going to be the afternoon tomorrow, so. I'm going to try to fish his hole. It's only five feet deep and it's close to the bank. If anything seems unsafe about it, I'm immediately going to not and go somewhere else. But I'll try to get there early so I can get my spot set up. And I got a couple other ideas besides that spot of where I can maybe fish. But it's literally 99.9% .9 um, not open water here. So worst case scenario, I'll be a little late and I'll head back to my house or something. And I will just join, try to join in the live stream and just like make fun of uh, Harrison and and uh, Griffin or something, you know, just screw around with them. What do we got? Oh, Josh Jerson sent a bunch of fires. That's probably because I got 40. Yeah, no, you're fine, Josh. I was totally joking with you. I like giving you guys a hard time, but I feel like sometimes because I'm like older than you guys, it feels like I'm just dragging on you, but I'm totally not. Everything I say is friendly. You should do a big Google meet. Oh, you mean for fishing? That's not a bad idea. <laughs> a big Google meet for fishing. Wow, that'd be crazy. You can do up to 10 people on one of these YouTube lives, but everyone should be screaming over each other. Maybe one day we will try to get like five, six people in here at once for a, uh, not for a talk because that'd be ridiculous, but for a fishing thing where people aren't necessarily going to be talking the whole time. We might try it. When is your stream tomorrow for your time? Oh yeah, fish layers for freshwater. I'm so sorry. You forgot to, it's 849 in your time. It's 1049 here. So go ahead and join us at 1230 tomorrow if you can. I think we're going to try for 2.30 Central, 3.30 Eastern, which will be 12.30 your time. And I keep getting distracted from what, what I was showing, but those were just the hooks for sure. One more time, the Harmony. It's like a $1.99 value. There's three hooks, and they are the Razor Series offset worm hooks. And it doesn't give me a size, but I'm saying two or three aught for sure. Probably a two aught. Tomorrow. Yeah, so but remember guys, the stream tomorrow is on Forward Fishing's channel. So please don't join me here. Please join us on Forward Fishing's channel for that one. Where we like to mix it up and give everybody a little bit of airtime. Let everybody host it. Um yeah, I'm gonna show these last two. I might wrap it up. I'm getting a little bit hungry, guys. I haven't really eaten in like many, many, many hours. I had like a pizza like nine hours ago. There's only four people in here, so the four of you lucky people who stayed are going to get to see the last two bass baits. Everyone who left is just missing out. They'll probably come back and uh, watch the review after it's posted. So I want to tell you guys, I got another jig by the same catch company, hard hat jigs. It's the diesel football jig. So the difference between this and the, what do they call the other one? A flipping jig is going to be the head on it. It's got a football-shaped weighted head. Oh, dude, go eat, bro. No, I'll be all right. I'll go eat after I show you all the baits. What is this color, though? Hold up. 
Okeechobee Crawl. Yes, that's a classic. I always hear people catching stuff on Okeechobee Crawl. So apparently, if you go to Lake Okeechobee, which is like a trophy, trophy lake, these are what the crawfish look like? I've seen some bluish crawfish, but that's pretty crazy. But yeah, that. What would you guys pair that with? Would you would you do a different color? Would you pair this uh, football jig? Would you throw it without a trailer? Would you? And I'm trying not to hook myself here live in front of you guys, but I guess that'd be funny. Would you hook? Would you pair it with one of these? Maybe rip a little bit off the body so it's not as long with the green pumpkin crawl. Or would you pair it with the Biospawn Vile Crawls in the sprayed grass? I think that might be an option as well. Probably cut this whole little squid head looking thing off to take all that extra off of it. What do you guys think about that? Good color combo or no? It matches the head. I love jigs. Yeah, Jaden Danger, I gotta get better with jigs. Do you like to pop them on the bottom or slow retrieve them, or do you do you fish them like a versatile bait, you know, a bunch of different ways? Cause I know you can. Magnus, do the vial spot, except the blue. So I need to try to find a crawl like this that's more blue. I think that would because the well, I don't know, it's either way. I think you could throw it either way because the and I held the wrong one up, of course. Where's the bio spawn thing? Because this green matches with the green on there. And then if I got a blue one, yeah, it, would ma it could match with the blue. So I think either one could be effective. You like to pop them off the bottom? Okay. For sure, guys. I got one more bait to show, and we're already over two hours. There's only three people in here, so I'm going to show the last bait, and then I'm going to probably go get something to eat. But I think the three people in here, who is it? Is it Josh, Magnus, and Jaden Danger? What happened to – uh? What happened to Harrison? He head out. I have no clue how to fish bass jigs. I don't either. Magnus, if I figure it out and I get some good footage, which I probably will take the camera with me, I'll make a video of my journey of learning them. Yeah, Jaden Danger, uh, Magnus, and then either Josh or Harrison's in here too. So, yeah, thank you guys so much. I got a super exciting last bait, and Magnus already knows what it is. He had an excellent guess. So the final bait – in the package. I think it's funny that when I was talking about panfish and stuff and little jigs, we had like 17 people in here. And now I'm talking about the most expensive bait. It's, it's just because it's gone on for so long and it's so late now. But now we're going to talk about the most expensive bait when we got three people in here. So before I end this thing up, I do want to say thank you guys one more time for staying till the end. The last bait, $14.99 for one bait. That's the type of bait you're scared to throw. Yeah, Georgia Fisherman, if it were sunny, if it were warm outside right now, I would have so many more fishing videos out. It's it's ice and it's been rough. And I'm looking forward just as much as you are to the fishing videos because I love fishing and I love editing those. Yeah, I'm about to I'm about to reveal what the $15 bait is. Yeah, Georgia Fisherman, and I know you said you wanted to see me do some bank fishing for panfish. And I'm gonna definitely do some of that coming up soon. So it is, drum roll please. Oh my gosh, Jaden said drum roll please. Right as I said it. I'm sure you guys are giving me a drum roll. I can't hear it, but Magnus gave me a text drum roll. And Magnus guessed what it was. Oh, before I show you this, <laughs> I, like to, I like to keep people on the edge of their seat. Look at a little sticker I got. The Wild West Fish Wrangler. Pretty sick. All right, I'm not going to tease you guys anymore. It is. The, another drum roll by Magnus, thank you. Oh, it looks like a, oh. The, Matt, Mystery Tackle Box Hat Guys Monthly Spotlight, Catch Company, Mike Buka's Baby Bullgill. And that picture is not what it looks like. That picture looks like a red breast. It looks just like a gill. Catch Company and legendary lure designer Mike Buka worked to bring modified versions of his revolutionary swim baits to the masses without compromising Mike's rigorous quality standards. The Buka Baby Bull Gill is the newest collaboration between two brands, a carefully crafted swim bait ready to make waves. The Baby Bull Gill sorry, works exceptionally well 
in places where bigger bass feed on panfish, well, duh, shad or small bass. Tip number one, giving a smooth and steady wind allows the bait to swim two to five feet below the surface. Tip number two, and yes, I'm going to show you guys the bait. I just want to read this. I'm really building it up. Faster retrieves will keep a tighter swimming motion. So you're going to have more wobble if you slow retrieve it. You're going to have a tighter swimming motion if you if you reel it a little faster, and it'll help it rise to the top quicker. So if you're seeing them blow up on topwater shad and stuff like that, top, and you see them doing big blowups at the top, like sometimes they'll be killing bluegills in my pond if I just see them smashing them. That's when you're going to wind a little faster. But I'm not going to throw this a lot in a weedy pond. It's going to be more of a, a little late thing. The baby bull gill works on medium to medium heavy casting and spinning rods. Rod power, recommended medium to medium heavy uh, crankbait style rods. So go ahead and comment, guys, what gear ratio you would throw with this. Rod action moderate, real speed, medium to fast retrieval speed. So is this something that you're going to throw like a 7-1-1 one, one, or are you going to go up to like an 8-something, an 8-1, a 1-1, one, one, or 8-4-1, or 741 or whatever they are. Um, what are you guys going to throw? Bye, Elliot Smith. It still says there's three people and there's like five people uh, commenting. YouTube always screws me over out of views. I don't know why, but it's fine. The last time I had like 15 hours of views and it only gave me four and a half. But YouTube doesn't want me to get monetized, but that's fine with me. Jane Danger says no. I said, what... What uh, gear ratio of baitcaster would you throw? Oh, you don't know. Definitely fast. Put it in third gear and let it rip. Yeah, but I mean like, all right, so here's what it looks like. That is so glary, it's not even funny. Oh, why are you glaring like that? There it is. I'll take it out of the package and it won't glare as much. <laughs> I said don't leave. So, yeah. Thanks to the four people sitting here. I'm going to bust this open. But Georgia Fisherman, the question that I'm asking, if anyone knows that's that, if anyone doesn't know, that's fine because I'll look it up. I'll just look up what gear ratio is good for like jointed swim baits. It said crankbait style stuff. Okay. Crankbaits, I thought were a little, were a little slower gear ratio. This is a 711 American Hero by Luz. And I got a crankbait on there, but this, this is, I think a uh, crankbait, you might even go a little slower. I'm not 100% sure. Maybe faster. I, I, I know that, that, that this is a good all around, but like if you want more specifically, you throw different stuff. I didn't know if you would go up to a 7.4 or an 8.1 or something faster if you're going to do the uh, the jointed swim bait like this or if you're going to throw um, – if you're going to throw something in the sixes as far as gear ratio for speed, you know, something a little slower. So if you guys don't know, that's completely fine. But, yeah, I will put it in third gear and let it rip. Yeah, I'll definitely – I'll fish it fast if it's in warm water and they're blowing up on top. Let it rip. I'll fish it slow too. I, I catch a lot of my fish on slow retrievals. Me, I'm a big mixing up cadence guy. No matter what I'm throwing, I'm not going to sit there and just slow retrieve it the whole time. I'm going to do twitches. No matter what, if I'm using a rooster tail, if I'm using a spinner, I'm still twitching it. I'm not just jigging jigs. But yeah, I like to mix up the cadence a lot because one, I've noticed that a lot of my strikes come the second I switch from slow to fast or something like that. I think the fish goes oh, no, what's the bait? Like, If a fish has been following the bait, deciding whether it wants to bite it or not, and then all of a sudden it starts going real quick or just like stops and dies off, it might think that that's its last shot to get a bite before it is like, whoa, it's getting unpredictable. So I do like to mix up my cadence a lot, but I will take both. The two people who gave me advice so far in there, Georgia Fisherman and Jaden Danger, thanks. They both said let her rip. So I'll, I'll, I'll fish it pretty fast for sure. I'm going to open this up for you guys. This is what a $14.99 bait looks like. This is the type of thing you go swimming for if you get it if you get it snagged somewhere or ends up in a tree. And it, maybe I should wait a month since I just got my bait caster and I'm, I haven't even caught a fish on it yet. Maybe I should get better with the bait caster before I go throwing this and end up with it in a tree. The package is being very difficult, but I am going to open this thing and show you guys. We got four people in here. I'm very hungry, so after I show you guys this, I'm going to uh, probably end this thing. All right, look at her. Yes, that hurts if you lose it. Fourteen ninety nine. Guess what would hurt more if I actually paid fourteen ninety nine for it? The mystery tackle box is probably between ten and twenty. I really don't know how much it is. Twelve ninety nine, something like that. 
I know they advertise it as ten dollars, but that's just your like your first one if you do some special deals. Just, yeah, you don't want troubles in the carpet. <laughs> I bet that was a funny reaction. <laughs> Check it out, y'all. Don't get those troubles in your carpet. But that's got a good color to it. It's got some green, so it could imitate green sunfish or a little bass, but it also it just looks a lot like a bluegill. But yeah, I paid you know less than the $14.99 because I got it as part of the mystery tackle box. Still hurts if you lose it though, for sure. Haha. <laughs> yeah. If this would have if this thing would have ended up with trebles in my carpet and I was sitting there trying to dig it out, this would turn into like the worst life. So I'd probably just end the thing. So we just had someone head out. We only got uh, three people left. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna give you guys the opportunity. Go ahead and um, if you have anything you want to say, any questions you want to ask, anything in the chat, go ahead and do that right now. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna just really, really quick. Oh yeah, there's something I did want to show you about this. This thing, the tail on it is like hair. It's like a brush. So that's super interesting. I actually just noticed that because I was playing around with it in my hands. But I'm gonna go over the other couple baits that were in this box real quick, and then we can end this thing. Yeah, Magnus, you already saw them, so you don't need to see the review. You guys probably all did, but I'll just get to review them real quick just because I want to. But good night, Magnus. Thanks for joining the whole. Like you were here for a long time, man. I really appreciate that. Join us next Tuesday. Can I get a yeet? Yeah, Magnus, give him a yeet before you leave if you're still there. You can get a yeet from me. Yeet. <laughs> but uh, yeah, thanks for joining us and join in next Tuesday at um, you're in Iowa, so you're probably going to be in Central Time. Join us at two thirty Central Time in uh next Tuesday for Multi Species Weekly. We're going to talk or join us tomorrow at, at uh, two thirty for some fishing. All right, Jaden Danger. Yeah, you got your yeet. Yeet. So there's that. And real quick, I'm going to show you guys. I'm going to do a quick uh, recap of all the other things that were in there. It's going to be like a two-minute recap, and then I will go ahead and let you guys go about your night. And I just want to say thank you again for supporting me and being in this thing. It was a last-minute idea to do the live stream, and the fact that I had 17 people in here, and then I have three awesome people. Yeet, yeet, says Magnus. You could test that lure in a swimming pool to see how – yes, yes, Georgia Fisherman. I have a swimming pool in my backyard. I have to do it when – the other people who live here are not home because they will absolutely freak out because if I get a hook in the side of that swimming pool, it's a above ground pool and it's got the soft sides. You know what I mean? It's not like a hard sided pool. If you get a hook in that, you will rip it. So I'll be careful, but yeah, I could do that in the swimming pool. So for the two people who are still in here, thank you so much. Um, cleaning up right now. We had a mystery. I'm not going to review all the items because then they'll just take too long. But the first one was a bass one. Second was, was a panfish and trout one, and tomorrow, Friday, I'm going to be fishing with those items, 2.30 Central, uh, 3.30 Eastern Time, live stream on Forward Fishing's channel, so check that out. It's going to be awesome. I'm going to be using those new jigs. Um, but also in here, I also got, not very exciting, got some hooks, whatever. The Excite Baits, I was excited about these because they had the well, it's called the raptor tail on them, which is a kind of a curly tail, but it's it's interesting. It's got like it's got a ball on it. So those are gonna be interesting to Texas rig, weightless rig, fisherman ponds and lakes. You got the super cool stick. I don't know. I like this sticker. I don't know if that's supposed to be a bass or what it's supposed to be, but the fish wrangler. That could be a YouTube channel or something. All right, and it always comes with tips and tricks and a spotlight of one of the baits that's in there. This was the hyperglide. Oh, wow. This was the, uh, this was the panfish one, but the spotlight on this one was the, uh, wherever it is, was that Buka bullgill. Second to last, we got this football jig, which was in the Okeechobee craw classic color. I'm definitely going to try this with and without a trailer. Jaden danger says, cool. It's all cool. Huh? Everything's cool about this. It's like yesterday I opened my first mystery tackle box ever. Just got to show you guys today, and then my second and third one, so, and my first panfish one ever, so, and then this was the cream lures, which I'm definitely gonna be catching some fish on these. We had discussed different ways to fish it, whether I'm gonna fish it on a jig like that football jig or the flipping jig, whether I'm gonna rig it weightless or even Texas rigged with a little peg, with a little uh, bullet weight, and just you know hop that along. Or an idea I had was cut it about here and put a Ned rig head on it so that the weight makes it fall down to the bottom, and then you're you're kind of uh, you're kind of popping it, and it it will it'll you can you know slow retrieve it backwards like a crawl that swims, 
or you can just kind of pop it like you crawl slowly moving along the bottom. Jig. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to try all those different ways. Uh, and I know you're a big jig guy, so I'll definitely try some of these with jigs. I'll run, I only got five, so I, I'll run out of ways to jig them, uh, ways, ways to rig them up after a while. But, yeah, since nobody has any questions in the chat, Ned for sure. I'm definitely going to try that Ned thing. Everyone, everyone seemed to think that that was a good idea when I said that. All right. Well, thank you, um, Jaden Danger, and it looks like Georgia Fisherman, you were the two who are still in here. Thank you guys so much. You can go ahead and chat if you have any ideas for upcoming videos, for live streams, for fishing, anything like that. It is 2.20. I'm going to give it exactly 60 seconds. So at 2.21, I'm going to end this thing. Um, go ahead if you have any questions or anything you want to say in the chat now. I'll, I'll go ahead and give you guys 60 seconds if you want to say anything. But I, re I really appreciate you guys joining in. Jaden Danger says three. Go fishing. Yes. Good night, Georgia. Thank you so much. Stay tuned for more videos. And let me know what you want to see. I know you like panfish. Let me know what else. Comment on my videos and let me know what you like and what you want to see. Jaden Danger says go fishing. I think that's the perfect way to end this, Jaden Danger. I'm going to go ahead and end this right now. Everybody, go fishing. Sunfish King out.